the hot seat. Guys, this is an exciting one, not only because of our guest, but we are working on a new streaming software. So we're going to do lots of fun new things with this tonight. Obviously, you can see it's a different kind of picture going on. But we got um, – and usually we have, we're going to do a lots of fun. What a lot of a Wait, who else? Who else is watching? Javen, that's me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, you're fired. <laughs> Although I think he just froze himself. Oh, there you go. Right there. Come on, right. guys. Let me the, I'm, uh, I'm gonna put that in my show notes. <laughs> that Javen messed this one up. And I dropped my pen. Excuse me. You go ahead and drop a pen. I'll flip a pen. I dropped my pen. All right. Hey, Hobo, be nice to the guests. It was his fault, not ours. So, anywho, let's get that started. Yeah, world's fastest hot seat. All right, guys. Uh, let's try again. Welcome to the hot seat. Uh, not only do we have a special guest tonight, we have... <laughs> we have a new streaming software, so we're going to be messing around with this a bit. Um, no, I can't. I can't put him on the big screen, but I am going to switch the screens up a little bit, okay? Uh, guys, this is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, all right? I can still see the chat. We can still get um, super shots. So if you guys would like to give super shots, you can still do it the exact same way. Um, we have to pay for this new streaming software, so feel free to donate. We'll appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I see we got more people in the chat. Keith Bettag is not going to be here tonight. So if we could have one of the other moderators uh, keep track of the chat, how many people are in there, uh, that'd be great. And then, uh, all right. This is interesting. I'm, I'm looking at a completely different screen. Obviously, you guys are too. Uh, but this is this is pretty pretty dang cool. Um, obviously, we got Javen from Postal Barbecue here to, here tonight. I'm gonna say hi to our our co-host with the most, Kent Vandyward, and I'm gonna change up the screen. And there's Kent. I can't make Kent bigger. I can't make Javen Burt bigger. Since I'm the host, I can. I'm the only one that could get bigger. So sorry, Kent. Say hi to the people. Hey, good evening, everybody. Jabin, welcome, my friend. Uh, it's good Thank to have you, you on. Thank this you, sir. Be, this should be a good one tonight. So uh, let's get the uh, the preliminaries out of the way. Let's set a, a, a super shot price. Uh, how about $30 Canadian? Yes. <laughs> Uh, for our community. So what is that? What is that uh, in good old U.S. American dollars? Uh, about 23, 24 bucks. All right. So there you go, guys. We're keeping it real for our Canadian friend tonight. <laughs> $30 Canadian. Y'all can do it. Knock it out. That's awesome. <laughs> no, it's $23 U.S. I love it. All right. Okay. I am seeing uh, – let's see. If you do it right, you can make them bigger, bro. Nice. Um, uh, so <laughs> we're, uh, that's not $1.99. You're looking at the chat right now, people are adding their own uh dollars, like yes. what it could be. All right, so tonight we have a sponsor, boys and girls. We, we are sponsored by Stan at. Sweet smoking Joe. Look at that, guys. We got graphics. What's up? Go team. <laughs> oh, geez. That's awesome. Hey, All right, guys. Me. All right. Uh, How many and, do you want? Uh, I think Kent has every bit of uh, uh, Sweet Smoky Joe's rubs there are and the barbecue sauces. That's awesome. Um Let's see here. Yeah, we only have Hobo as a mod in the hot seat right now. What? That's, we... um, okay, time to promote Smoke and Joe. Time to promote Big Joe. All right. That's a little scary if Hobo's the only one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, the dog father, Alton. Uh, <laughs> you are now a mod. <laughs> 
you've been hired, Alton. So uh, keep track of the people in the chat, if you will. And then uh, if we need any links thrown in there, please make it happen. Oh, this is awesome. I'm dude, I'm kind of excited about this. We, uh, If you guys did, missed it last night, we went live. Even Javen jumped on for a little bit. This is very, very cool. I'm excited for this. All right. Yeah. CJ. Hope really keep track of shit. That's right. I really like the look on uh... – uh, while watching the chat on the iPad, it's uh, it's a lot clearer than Hangouts. Yeah, yeah, the Hangouts are clear. Um, I'm I'm digging this. It, it does look really good. The quality is good. It's right now it's set at 720, but that's not bad. Um, and you get your sponsor logos up there, which is important, right? End yeah. of the day, that that's that's crucial. That's great. Yeah, I think it looks right. I'm excited about this. All right, Rob's Pit Stop. Welcome, welcome. Uh, when are we going to have another whiskey review? Uh, probably in a week or so, we'll host another one. Uh, those are not really scheduled, but it's been, it's been fun. Uh, we get demonetized on that one uh, because uh, YouTube does not like uh, cigars and cigar reviews or whatever. So it'll just be after to have to do that. So. All right, Jabin, say hi to the people, and then I'll uh, announce the chat. Guys, it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is like a long time in the coming uh, as well, right? So yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to be joining with you guys. Uh, stoked to be just like talking uh, life and barbecue, YouTube, whatever we get up to. Um, this is just going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Uh, I think how many times have we had something scheduled or been kind of crossed ways? Uh, at least oh. two or three other times we had it kind of set up. So we yeah, finally got it on the board. Like loose, loose ones. It's like, yep. Finally made it happen. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, people I see in the chat, we got obviously Stan from Smoke, uh, Sweet Smoky Joe. Thank you for being a sponsor tonight. We appreciate it. Um, I will, you guys pay attention to some of the questions that Jabe is answering uh, halfway through. I'll I'll ask uh, I'll ask one of the questions. If you answer it correctly, then you'll be the big winner, and you win uh, a package of the rubs. Uh, Stan, throw it in the chat exactly what it was, uh, and uh, I think it's two or three rubs in there. It's it's good stuff. I've been using it for a while. Dutch has been using it for a while. We love it. So uh, let's see here. All right, Jamie, thank you for being here, brother. Sorry, this this whole new thing is kind of throwing me off a bit, but. It's been pretty cool. Just how you doing? Todd, Dad, incre Dad Incredible. Uh, we should promote Suburban Barbecue. Yes. Everybody, if you're not subscribed to Suburban Barbecue, uh, do so. He's the one with the most subs and no content. Yeah. Yeah, Dutch. Go ahead, buddy. What uh, are you doing in my chat? I'm out, I'll get out of your chat. I gotta, I'm, not, I'm announcing the people in the chat. I got one room my bad. All right. Uh, only 32 people watching. That's that's a travesty. You guys, make sure you're sharing this and make it and get people in there. All right. So we got pickles in there. Stan from Sweet Smoky. Uh, Sweet Smoky Joe. Sorry. Uh, Hobo, obviously. Jim Suburban Barbecue. Big Rome's in the house. Dan's Outdoor Cooking. Jim EQ. Camp House Barbecue. Big Joe Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. LT. Chris from Eastwood Farms. Uh, see here, Blue Smoke Barbecue, Smoking Bears, GT's Barbecue, Tom's Food Factory. What's new, Barbecue, Kate? <clears throat> KC, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? Enzo, son of a pizza man. Jacqueline and Dad, I don't know if I said that already. That's not as much as it usually is, so we're doing all right. Big Cat 305, what's up, Mike? All right, so we got uh, Kent. Let's, let's all acknowledge Kent in his new employee wear. Let's talk about it. That's that's can we can, can we do a can we do a, a spin around please? There he is. Who's part of CJ's crew right there? That sexy beast. I it love matches, it. It matches my hat also. Yep, and he's repping for North Texas Barbecue Addicts. Very cool. Right for KC. All right, Grill Sergeant. Yo, what's up? All right. All right, so we got – I think we got everything away. The Henry Sipper, 
Henry White is the shit. All right, cool. Uh, see your CJ's bitch. <laughs> That's not very nice, Chris. Uh, do you like to keep the membrane? On? Oh, Rob Kent will ask that for you. I get in trouble if I start reading the chat and answering questions, so he'll write that down for you. Oh, Eastwood got put. Oh, sorry, Henry Henny. Sorry, Henny. My bad. All right, Jabin, you ready for these hard hitting questions? I'm ready. Anytime you are. Let's All do right. this. Let's do this. Uh, where are you from? Where do you live? Where'd you grow up? Give us the whole story. Yeah, so um, I grew up in the center of Canada, uh, where it's freezing cold most of the year. And thankfully, we moved out to an island in the Pacific. Um, it's like the Hawaii of Canada. Um, it's called Vancouver Island. Uh, it is the West Coast. Um, it's like the most gorgeous place in, in Canada and uh, like a top destination for beauty in the world. Uh, it's absolutely unreal here. Um, kind of like down in uh, the, the West Coast of the States. You got a lot of like nature, a lot of uh, you know, beaches, lots of beauty. Uh, that's kind of what it's like here. It's just uh, extended up. Uh, past, you know, past where you guys are. Uh, and yeah, it's an island uh, in the middle of the Pacific. Well, not in the middle, but off the mainland. Uh, yeah. It's a place called Comox, uh, Comox Valley. Uh, we're known for our beaches, our, um, our snowboarding. Uh, we have like the most snow in the world a lot of times on our mountain. Um, and uh, lots of retired people. <laughs> but it's pretty great like you can go yeah we always tell people that are out of town like you can go snowboarding uh golfing and to the beach on the same day uh as well as go to some of the rivers uh and just swim in, in like the waterfalls and whatnot so it's pretty cool right on yeah we uh we got that in california too we go skiing yeah. surfing not that i do either but we can do it uh let's see here all right let's talk about your family life Wife, kids, dog, cat, ferret, whatever. Yeah, we have a, a hamster. Nice. Um, his name is uh, Everett. If my boys are watching, um, then they'd be like screaming right now that they mention him. But yeah, uh, married uh, for the past 14 years and uh, have three boys. If you watch some of my older videos, they're often in, in those videos just like – feasting and helping out a little bit. Uh, I uh, once unboxed one of them and uh, yeah, they're, um, they're all nine, seven and pretty much five here. And so they're, they're, they're young. They're, they're three boys who have a lot of energy and um, just want to be involved with everything. So it's a pretty, pretty fun, pretty fun household. Right on, right on. All right. What is your real job besides YouTube extraordinaire? YouTube creator. Well, <laughs> that's interesting because um, it's YouTube um, as well as uh, a video. I own a video production company. And so oh, wow, uh, when, wow. I'm not, when I'm not making videos for YouTube uh, or for businesses for YouTube, um, I'm making videos for brands and uh, make uh, in the summertime, like right now is wedding season. So it's a lot of cinematic wedding films, like the ones that, you know, you watch, uh, you don't know the couple, uh, but by the end of the wedding film, you're, uh, you're crying because of the story and the emotion that you're feeling because of that uh, couple story. And uh, yeah, just kind of like um, always, always hustling the uh, new project and um, making videos for a living. So. Right on, right on. Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of, we've talked about this in the past and like the hangouts, but uh, you're pretty big, or well, you're, well, you're friendly. You know Sean Cant, uh, Cannell from uh, Think Media. Uh, yeah. I, that's actually how I found you by watching his video and how you were, you know, working with him. And he was saying how you grew one way or the other. Um, let's talk about how you guys got hooked up with that and what, you know, how you both kind of grow grew from there. Oh man, that's a, that's a really long story. Um, I'll try to summarize it for you. Uh, I know we got like what everyone's here for five hours. You said, so we, yeah, got, we got plenty, we got, of, time. plenty <laughs> of time. Yeah. So basically like we, we first met each other. Um, oh, I would say, 
I would say about 10 years ago. And it was like kind of in passing, but enough to like, you know, follow through with the Facebook friend scenario uh, back when like Facebook was like new. Right. And, and then I was working at my old job and just kind of like feeling discontent. And I felt like I need to call a buddy uh, and say like, it, like give him a call. I was like, well, dude, what's up? Tell me something. What am I supposed to be doing? And he's like, he basically asked me a few questions. We fi figured out that what I was wanting to do in life was uh, make videos for a living. Yeah, this is going back like five years ago. And he invited me to come film a conference that he was, that Sean was going to be filming. And so at that moment we kind of like reconnected and he was just like moving out of his uh, position in his, his job uh, to YouTube. And this was like one of his last gigs. And so we got connected and we were like, let's, let's just keep this going. And uh, we both, you know, just had that passion for, for YouTube and for, uh, you know, uh, video SEO and um, like video marketing components. And we just kind of like kept in touch uh, to the point where, yeah, I would call him a mentor and a friend. And um, yeah, he's a great guy. Right on, right on. Have you ever tried to work out like a collaboration of, like has he ever had, do you want to discuss your, your show or anything like that? Or your channel? No, no I, I did, I did uh, work for him for a little bit. Um, and his team, uh, I would say it was like a month. We were just uh, testing some water, see if we can make make it work long distance. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, if you if you scroll through some of his content from a few years ago, uh, you you might be able to see some of that. But um, but we've never, other than like collaborating in the sense of like um, to grow what he's doing, um, where he's he's asked for specific um, testimonials or specific content. Um, that's been that's been pretty much pretty much it. and I think that's how you how you found me through some of that content right 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 you yeah. know when I, when I got you know I get started doing these these things you know uh, I want to be uh, as prepared as possible right so uh, when I decided to take it a little bit more seriously I started tuning in to Sean and Sean and Benji and Nick Neiman and Brian G Johnson all them guys who you know a lot of the guys every other video is how to get more subs on you know youtube this year in 2009 it's very redundant stuff except yeah. for sean and benji I, I i like how they kind of change things up to do video review or uh, product reviews or what's the best thing in in the when they talk about even their affiliate uh links and their affiliate money uh just by i have five cameras here this is the one I think is best, but they get money off of all of them. It, it's genius the way they do their affiliate marketing. So. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, I, th I think the thing that, that differentiates uh, those guys is just they're, they're genuine. They're genuine guys. Yeah. And, uh, like, I've, I personally have nothing but absolute respect for, uh, for what they're up to and, and the, the passion they have for seeing guys like us really succeed in this industry. Right. So, um, if I don't know if you can put a link up there, but if if anyone it doesn't know what we're talking about, um, Think Media is sort of the the, the main hub uh, for his channel. Uh, but a great resource is Video Ranking Academy, and right, I think probably .dot com. Um, and it's like it just like goes deep into into YouTube world and YouTube culture uh, to a point where it's like you can. Uh, you can go full time, and I've seen I've had friends that have gone through, gone through that, and they're full time. It's, it's right. unbelievable. So, and yeah. they're uh, some of them guys are making real money, like oh yeah, yeah. Com comfortable money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've noticed we got a couple more people in the chat. Uh, Shane from Never Trust the Skinny Chef. One of our moderators, Leprechaun TV, is in the house. Uh, West Coast K Jim Blevins in there. And we got our first super shot. So from Gary from GT's Barbecue. Cheers. Take a big old swig of that cruller. Whatever. Cheers. Ah, that's good stuff. <laughs> it kind of tickles on the way down. <laughs> I feel a little bit bad for you guys. Why? Because we get to drink a lot. I get to drink this delicious deliciousness. <laughs> Uh, the whiskey helps. It's it's purely medicinal. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Kent, what are you drinking tonight, brother? I am back to the uh, the Crown Royal Bourbon Mash. Nice. So you really dig it, huh? I yeah, I do. I love it. I'm gonna have to give me some of that. I I, I you know obviously I enjoy me some Crown Royal, but uh, yeah. we'll give it a go. All right, Jabin, what are you what are you drinking in that that bad boy right there? Um, this is I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's called Land and Sea Brewing. This is the, they're basically my neighbors, and this is a um, it's called Co Mexico. Again, Comox Mexico. We're kind of like the same thing. Uh, pale. pale it's got a bit of citrus in it, as well as a soft mouthfeel uh, to it, and it's just delicious. It's. You say, uh, did you say soft? Did you say soft mouthfeel? Soft mouthfeel. All right, just just wait for the chat to get a hold of that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big cat, big cat, three hundred five. Give it up. Take a big shot. Smoking uh, Joe's one. pit barbecue will be the first one to comment on mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, so you see, see how things can turn sideways, Javen. I can. Yep. <laughs> so no, so don't taste soft mouthfeel in a chat like this. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Rob. Dutch got that question down for you, brother. We'll get it to you. Uh, I'm gonna send it over to Dutch pretty soon. Okay. Thank you guys for the super shots. We love you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, last question before we turn it over to <coughs> before we turn it over to Kent. This is a lifetime question from Mega Fred Zeppelin. Mega Fred in the house. What kind of music do you like? And do you got oh. any instruments? Do you, do you play anything? You got any singing chops? Tell me about it. Um, I would say my my all time favorite um, right now, anyways, uh, that's on rotation is Foo Fighters. Um, love Foo Fighters. Um, their newest album is, is literally on repeat. In terms of like aging um, albums that uh, or artists that never go out of style, it's like Ramones. Um, right. uh, who else? Who else would I put on? Oh, um, I'm a Johnny Cash guy. Uh, oh well, yeah, Johnny who, Cash, Stephen King. Um, I don't know. I like if I'm not listening to if I'm not listening to the Foo Fighters, I'm just on songs uh listening to playlists. And uh, lately, that's been like um, surf, surf sunshine, something like that. It's like just sort of mellow. Sit on the patio, summertime. Uh, but but I'm like I, I grew up as a punk rock guy, and so like you know the Ramones and the Misfits, uh, Pennywise, uh, No Effects, uh, Nirvana, uh, a lot of those types of bands are uh, all the good sort of like, all the good grunge from uh, the '90s, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, someone asked. Someone asked, "What about Nickel Nickelback?" Oh, I love Nickelback. They're my absolute favorite. They're Canadian too, right? <laughs> Brian Adams. <laughs> Kent, why were you dying it over there earlier? While when we... he said Foo Fighters, all I could think of was Chris from East Wind Farms. Lives up uh, in uh, the Northeast, and he hates the Foo Fighters. So I just <laughs> found it hilarious. So my first question to you, Javen, was going to be, if you were on Chris's live stream, which Foo Fighters uh, song would you want to hear first? The Pretender. All right, there you go. Open it the Pretender. Are you putting it on? No, 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 no. No, no. Oh, no, no. We don't want the copyright, please. Otherwise, I would. Yeah. So when that song came out, I, I was listening to the radio when it came out, and the radio station, because it because that song is so good, they played it twice in a row, back to back. Like, epic song, uh, epic album. It's so good. Right on, right on. All right. A couple more people in there. Johnny Mags from Pit Life Barbecue's in there. Louis Calamides is in there. Calamatis, whatever. He's in the house. Appreciate you guys all being here. Suburban Barbecue's in the house. Uh, 41 watching. Let's get more bucks in them seats, peoples. Uh, here, here's another cool thing we could do. Watch this. Look at that. Can, can you guys see? Ooh. I could put comments. 
on the screen. What up? Uh, so exciting. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Babe of Josh and Babe is here. Hey, and guys. Over. Let's see here. Wes So Tejas Barbecues in the house. Suburban Barbecue. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to – we'll throw that up there. Oh, did someone delete it? You know what, Joe? I'm never going to pronounce his name right. So there. Let it go. Uh, someone deleted it. <laughs> nice. Hey, Jim, I would have put it on. I would have put your comment on there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how's Josh doing, babe? Is he is he hurting still? Can we cover up Kent with comments? No. <laughs> Wait, here. Let's try this. Let's try it. Ah, damn. We can't. There you go. All right. We're back. <laughs> oh, Eastwood Farms been put on timeout. Kent's a ball buster in there, man. Hey, good evening, the grumpy old gringo senior. How you doing? All right, Kent, you got the comms, buddy. All right. Uh, the first question, Jabin, is from the guy who CJ can't pronounce his name. And I'm going to ask his first because his question is way too long for me to write down. I'll get carpal tunnel. <laughs> it says, uh, Jabin, perfect barbecue cook or meal? Type of food, seasoning, setting, with who, the whole deal. What is it? Your perfect meal. Perfect meal. Oh, that's a loaded question. Because I love food. Like, I'm a food guy. Like, I can't have the same thing over and over. But I would say if I had to choose one thing for right now, it would be a – uh, a smoked pork loin with uh, a sweet sort of like yeah, a sweet rub, like a rib rub, um, smoked low and then sliced thin for sandwiches, um, as thin as possible, slice as thin as possible. And then I would also do that down at the beach on a Jumbo Joe because it's portable and bring out uh, family as well as friends just to kind of hang out at the beach for the night. And that meal is just like one of the pieces uh, that goes along with uh, a number of other things that could happen. <laughs> that could that's happen. not my favorite meal though. Um, that's just what I would want right now. Uh, I would say like, I'm, a, I'm anything pork, like uh, pork butt steak, uh, or uh, ribs, or um, I, I, I don't know if you, if you guys have followed my channel, like I don't do a lot of long cooks because I don't have the patience for like a 10 hour, 12 hour cook. Um, I like the short, like four, four hours type cooks. And so anything you can do with, with pork within like two to four hours, that's my jam. That's, that's what I like. You know what? I, I got to say, I think that's uh, about the best answer I could hear tonight, just for the fact that Saturday I'm going to a cook-off. I'm doing pork loin, and I'm actually using Sweet Smoky Joe's Honey Chipotle Rub Ooh. on the outside with a bourbon yeah. honey onions on it. Oh, dang, man. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. I, found, I found this uh, bourbon-infused honey. When I was in Florida, and this stuff is awesome. Oh, I bet. So the reason why I say that is because uh, for me, it, it's it's faux pulled pork, right? Because you, if, especially if you get there's on the pork loin, there's different there's different sections of it, right? If you right. get the um, pork loin rib section, I believe it's a little more like brown meat, and right. if you if you, if you cook that, it's a little bit harder to cut, but it's it's essentially like the brown like the leg of a chicken right and so a little more moist a um, little more flavor and you slice it thin and um it's it's literally done within two hours you slice it thin and it tastes exactly like pulled pork and uh, only you're saving 10 hours of time <laughs> right okay. and so you can really do it any day of the week and slice and and the key is you slice it thin it's like, it's like as thin as you can get it, then pile it high, put some slaw in it, some sauce, bun, you're good. See what I what I like to do with with the darker meat 
and I'll do this Saturday, is I have to turn in four slices. So I'll slice four real nice and thin. And then I'll actually take the dark meat out of the loin and pull it and lay it in the box in strands like pulled pork also. Oh, yeah. So, because not a lot of people same. do that. And they're like, oh, what's this? This is different. So would that be the same cook time then or what? Yeah, it's all the same cook time. Really? Yep. You can, you can, you can pull it real easy. So. Huh. All right. Hey, Ken, I put a comment on the screen for you. <laughs> like I can freaking read that. <laughs> what does Ken like to do with his dark meat? Whatever the hell I want, Hobo. <laughs> oh, I love this new software. <laughs> uh, I could have read it down here, too. It's a lot easier to see. Holy shit. All right. Uh, next one. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, these are getting tougher, let me tell you. Uh, Rob's Pit Stop wants to know, when you cook ribs, do you pull the membrane or leave it on? Oh, definitely pull, pull the membrane. Um, if you don't, it's, I mean, they're still edible, but you're going to have a, a better experience with, with the membrane pulled. I, had, I was up at a, a craft beer event last weekend, and, and the chefs, they didn't pull it. And it was like, it wasn't terrible, but I was fighting. I was fighting the ribs for sure. And so much to the point where I had a couple and then I didn't have any more. Uh, I went to the chicken. And and so when you, you can leave it on, I've seen people like, um, I, I think it's the um, barbecue pit boys. They often take their knife and just like score it and say that you can just score it. Uh, all that's going to do is it's going to help it, it pull off easier, but you still have to get rid of it somewhere. You either get rid of it um, – when you pull it off in your mouth, then like toss it or you get rid of it at the beginning. But either way, it's coming off those ribs. So you might as well take it off at the beginning. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I'd rather take the time and do it right from the beginning than yeah. fight it at the end. Um, see, Wait. I think I saw you post a link down there. Uh, Javen, I'm going to interrupt you for one second because we do have a yeah. big collaboration coming up that uh, I know is close to CJ's heart. And uh, it's close to mine also. I lost my stepmom a week and a half ago uh, to a battle with cancer. And uh, Shane, our friend down in Melbourne, Florida, also lost his son, I think, is it four years ago now, Shane? Remind me if I'm wrong, uh, to cancer. So we're having a collab coming up on August 24, that's hashtag cooking against cancer. So if you guys want to be in that, um, look up Shane on YouTube, let him know you're in so we can get a list of everybody going. So, All right. so, so guys, okay, I'm going to keep that, keep that comment. That's, what's it about? Like what's, uh, what's okay. the, how do, we, how do we get involved? The, the collaboration is just we're putting that hashtag on your barbecuing, whatever, or not even barbecuing, cooking, barbecuing, whatever, that someone in your life has been, who has been touched by cancer, either you know has it, fought it, lost the battle, whatever, um, we're going to make their favorite dish. So recently, my son just beat uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, so I'm going to have him come on and we're going to make his favorite dish. Oh, cool. so, so come say hi. Grady, Grady's right here. So great. Uh, right there. So Grady, Hello. Grady B. Cancer got us all his hair back. He's doing good. So we're gonna work on his favorite dish for this collaboration. Yeah. Okay, oh, man, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So anybody who wants to join in, uh, can be a part of it. We'll just you'll put that hashtag on your video in the description. Whatever you know, whatever you want to cook. So whatever, what do you want to cook? Wait, I cook. Well, you're gonna help me cook. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd let Grady. All right, think about it. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. You bother me. Hey, Grady, Grady looked great on that new uh, Ninja Foodie Grill. Yeah, right. The, the uh, Ninja Foodie Grill. All right, so guys, uh, I'm gonna take that. Uh, I'll take that comment down. But you guys uh, know what it is. All right, so go ahead, Kent. 
All right, next one, uh, Jim from Suburban Barbecue. Uh, Javen Postal, is that your real name? If it is, he says that's the coolest name ever. Well, you, you heard I was a fan of the Ramones, right? Um, so with the Ramones, uh, every new member takes on the last name Ramones. And so it's not their real last name, but everyone is like Joey Ramone. Um, who is it? Mikey Ramone? Uh, whoever. I can't remember. Um, but they all took on the last name. This, however, is my real last name, as well as real first name. And so um, because if you, if you were to follow, like, my life as well as uh, our family's life, we're really proud of it. It's like, because it's so unique, there's so few of them out there. I've never met another person with the same last name. We capitalize on it. So like, um, the, my YouTube channel is called Postal Barbecue. Um, and then because of that, it's like, that's why I used to, and maybe try still now to have like some rock and roll woven through it a bit, uh, because it's like that sort of takes it on. Um, but my company is Jabin Postal Films because it's just brand recognition. I want that our last thing to like go out into the world and and uh, not just sort of like be on the sidelines because it is a unique last name. So yes, it is uh, it is a last name, a real last name. Uh, we I wish we got some royalties from the postal service, but um, <laughs> it's never going to happen. Ask me where it came from. I have no idea. Um, there's no like historical family record of like where it came from, what part of the world. Um, it's just what we're, what we got. Okay. Uh, smoking Joe's having fun with the smoking Joe's Ramon, CJ Ramon. CJ Ramon. What's up? Yeah. You know how he gets in the chat now. So Yeah. Don't get uh, started on shrimp. We'll be here all night. Uh, Alton, I'll get to your question in a second, buddy. Uh, <laughs> kind of funny. Let's see. Uh, Lewis at R Shack Barbecue up in the Northwest wants to know, uh, do you go down to Beeham to shop? Um, I do not, uh, partly because to get there, I'm going to have to take a ferry off the island and then navigate crazy traffic to get to a border crossing, then to get to Bellingham. Um, and then you have to do the reverse. So that would be like probably over a day to get there and back. Uh, like I said at the beginning, like I'm on a, I'm on an island, uh, on like it's called Vancouver Island. And the only way on and off is through a ferry. I did have a friend who moved here from Africa and he got to the airport in Vancouver and asked if he was coming to, to the Comox Valley on the island. And he asked the, uh, the ferry or the taxi driver to take him from Vancouver to Comox, uh, thinking that it was just a bridge across uh, to the island. And the guy was like, wasn't going to let him do it. Anyways, it's kind of a bad story. But um, it's pretty, it's not very uncommon for people to think that it's like attached to the mainland. Uh, but uh, it is like, it's probably close to two hours of a ferry ride just to get to uh, any sort of uh, stable, stable land. So that's why it's so beautiful. It's how like many, we how are, many kilometers is the island off the mainland? Um, I would I would say it's probably like uh, sixty kilometers off the mainland. All right, kid, do you know what a kilometer is? So that's one point six <laughs> uh, kilometers to a mile, right? I believe. Uh, right. Someone in the chat can be like, "No, it's one point six six, and it actually might be one point six six. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's like, what, 40, 40, 40. some miles? Yeah. Hey, I'm, uh, CJ, get off my ass. I'm keeping it Canadian, eh? That's hey, right. I, 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 sorry. I sorry, eh? <laughs> sorry, eh? It's all right. What are we talking about, what are we talking about now? Yeah. Uh, Shut up, you uh, hoser. Hey. You hoser. Hey, we actually have another Canadian in the chat. We got Canadian. Canadian Jim's here. Welcome, buddy. Uh, nice. Canadian, uh, Jim. <laughs> Where are the, Canadian super, from? the super hey. shot price tonight is $30 Canadian, which works out to roughly 25 bucks American or 24 bucks American, whatever. So there you go. We can, we can get some Canadian uh, super shots in there. We appreciate it. Um, Big Rome, I saw your $5 super chat. 
uh, you don't get shots unless you pay the price, buddy. We don't get drunk for free up in here. <laughs> yeah, not on the super chat. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, can you still have questions left or are we good? Yeah, I got a couple left. Um, right, go Javen Pickles wants to know, Pickles Barbecue, have you ever done a, a barbecue competition? Um, do you know, I've never done one. And partly it's being in Canada, barbecue isn't actually like very a big thing. Um, and there is some, uh, is it K, KBSC? No, KB, KS, whatever, the Kansas KCBS. City area. But the, KCBS. Um, but the last one I saw was about an hour away and about three years ago. And other than that, it, they're all on the mainland. Um, I would love to. I've been trying to – every year we have this thing called Rib Fest where um, – there's these big rib trucks that come through uh, and they raise money for Rotary, uh, Rotary International. And so they've done that like four years in a row now. And I've been trying to get them every single year to do like a backyard barbecue uh, cookout. And where it's like the, yeah, they just, they can do ribs, they do steak, whatever sort of on the menu. And they have the judges that judge the, the rivers at uh, this actually at the event um, judge the um, the local chefs and I I would love to, to be one of the judges and you know because I just love to eat and I love flavor and any excuse to get some pre cooked or not pre cooked but cooked for me ribs I'll take. Um, I don't. Well, think do you see uh, Big Rome? He completed his super shot order. So, cheers. <laughs> Said you were saying, now drink. <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating here. No, you don't are, worry. You're I'll, I'll you're like like a lot of this compared to you guys. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I'm drinking Crown. That's and Canadian. When, I, when I, I ran out of Crown, so now... I got a little bit over here, and then I'm going to switch to Pendleton after that. So I'm all Canadian whiskey all the time. That's right. Uh, so I do have some uh, some Shelter Point. Uh, I don't know if one of the last videos I did uh, was Shelter Point um, whiskey ribs, and I have their new gin that just came out this year. Uh, and it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a bit different. But tasty. Right on. That's about it. Boot. So boot it. <laughs> All righty. You're up. All right. Uh, let's see. Last one for this round. Well, no, I got two. I'm sorry. Um, Big Cat 305 wants to know, Javen, you've been doing YouTube for quite a while. So if you had to restart at the beginning, what would you do different? Oh, I think honestly, I would I would really get involved with um, the. I would do a couple of things. I would I would not close myself into barbecue specifically. Um, like CJ has done a great job with um, oh, being bring, being a cook, right? Like. You know, it's like today I saw a review of the uh, Ninja Grill, which go – if you haven't seen that video, go check it out uh, because it's pretty cool. Like I, I wish I had it tonight because before this broadcast, I was cooking um, wings in the oven, and they were so-so. They were fine. But I'm, I'm thinking – I watched his review of that thing, and I'm like, that's that's what I wish I was able to do on, on my channel because – it opens up to the variety of cooking for like cause in the winter time, it might be snowing or it might be uh, on where, where I'm from. We don't get a lot of snow, but we get tons of rain. And so I might, I might not be able to cook outside for three weeks. Right. And so to be able to, to come inside with, with the Ninja grill, um, that would be amazing. Um, and so not just not pinholing myself into outdoor cooking. 
that would be yeah. one thing. As well as the next thing would be to right away get involved with online communities. Uh, when I started, uh, it was back in like 2000 and I would say 13 was when I put my first video out. We like Facebook groups wasn't really much of a thing. And so because of that, it took me, it took me like over a year to get my first hundred subscribers. Right. And so I had to, I felt like I had to build that traction, um, <laughs> from nothing. And so if I was to start again, like I would start the channel, put, put a few videos out and immediately get involved with groups and communities like online to really just like help get my foot in the door and help get me to a point where, you know, there is regular views and comments and, and likes coming in. They might not be from people that are searching for the content, but they're people from the community that are, are watching and encouraging me to keep going. Cause I'm kind of in a place right now where it's like, I know, I know the algorithm, but I don't have a lot of time because of, of like outside work. And, and so it's kind of like, I, you, you kind of hit a, hit a plateau and like looking at a lot of newer channels, they're so excited about putting content out because of the community that's surrounding them. They're always pushing them, them like, like CJ and can't like you guys are, you're putting content out all the time. And like, it, it's, it's, it, it's exciting for me to see. And I just wonder like, how are these guys doing it? How are, how are you like pushing out content as uh, so, so much? Uh, and I think it really comes back to that community that's around you, like CJ's crew, right? Right. Like you have this people that are just pushing you on to keep going and going. And when I started it, 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 that wasn't really much of an option. And so I've had to find sort of my own rhythm uh, over the past number of years. And I kind of got locked into my rhythm. And so if you notice, I don't do a lot of content in the summertime because it's part of my rhythm. You would think like more barbecue content in the summertime when the grilling season is, is, is better. Right. But I just had to sort of fit it into, into my life. And summertime, I love to be at the river and I love to be swimming and spending time with the, with the family. And so it's like I, I cook more in the worst times of the year than, than the best times of the year. Well, I'll tell you what, man, there's a, there's a link below for that Ninja Foodie Grill. Yes. It, would, it actually would be good for barbecue channels. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, it's like the, the, um, the guy I interviewed, uh, the Fire Escape Griller. He – obviously used to grill on his fire escape in New York in Manhattan or whatever it is, but he moved up somewhere. He moved somewhere else where he had no access to a fire escape still in Manhattan. He still couldn't do it. So these are the type of things. That's why when they called me on it, I was like, I'm in, what can I do? And I have yeah. seriously, I have, I made 11 videos that are going to drop these next few days because I was so excited about doing it. I was filming yeah. my own two videos that I released during the week and this extra one just to start having them ready to go because I was pumped up to get it done. And it and dude, we all get stuff sent to us. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good, whatever. This yeah. this thing right here, I was pumped up about. Like I was killing me that I couldn't say nothing. And so I, had to, I actually had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. You know, I filmed some stuff for them, you know, so they had some background stuff. Dude, I love it. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to try it, actually, because, like, yeah, I was, I was convinced that this is a product that I'd like to try. When I saw those, I want to say uh, peaches, yeah. uh, the grill marks on the peaches, like, if you can do that in your house, um, you can it's it's got to have some ability to to cook well yeah, and yeah. then then when i cook my wings tonight there was mm -hmm. there's no color they were uh, the texture was good but and the flavor was all right but they, it wasn't what that thing would have produced for me right on yeah i did go check out that link like do me a favor do cj, CJ a favor go check out that link and um, make an order like just do it the, the link below. Uh, sorry, sorry to kind of jump in on that, Kent, but it felt like a good time to jump in. So I apologize for interrupting. 
I appreciate the no pin flip. That was very nice of you to let me slide on that one. We do have a super shot. If you would bring your nose back down to, to the rest of us. Sweet man. Since you're doing my job, I'm watching the truck race at Eldora on the dirt. Good Lord. Take, take the damn shot. Thank you, Mike Montoya, for his traditional 29-29 super shot. Cheers, brother. Thanks, Mike. Mm. And we lost our guest. We lost our guest. Okay, okay so um, last night I told you that – and I, I feel like it's fitting. Last night I told you I was going to bring something special. Um, this is – like I said, this is my local um, brewery. Like the Comox Valley is like – we've got uh, – within the next two weeks we'll have like seven breweries for like, like – um, and so we're like, we're like the Portland of BC essentially for that. Um, and so I told you I was going to bring you, bring something special. So this is what I started with, a uh, land and sea pale ale. And I figured now because of that super shot, I would let, let you all decide on what's next. So this is a wild IPA. Um, it's four wins. Very good. Uh, this is a backcountry brewing Widowmaker IPA. Uh, they're all hazy. This is the Boombox. It's another craft IPA. And then Steamworks. This is probably the most like um, mainstream of them all. But all right. Still let's, really let's, do, let's do this. What has the highest alcohol content? Oh, I have no idea. The APV. Oh, 6.7, 7.3 Boombox, 6.7, and 6.5. So the 7.3. So Take it. That's okay. the one. That's the winner. Well, this one. This is. A, I met these guys at a at a beer craft beer retreat. I was filming a few weeks ago on a floating resort in on the middle of nowhere on the west coast. So again, like talking about uh, my day job with um, with making videos. This this job had me out literally filming. Um, brewers and guests and we had the best curated curated beer in bc uh, all there on a floating resort paired with amazing food and um, the chef was like a barbecue guy so it was like amazing we had brisket and, and wings and a beet pickled uh, beet marinated smoked salmon it was unreal like anyways i'll show you this one. so similar to the last one It's got a, uh, not as soft of a mouth feel. Uh, <laughs> just opens it. Just opens it up. I'm surprised no one jumped on the fairy comments earlier. We have a we have a rough group a rough group of people here sometimes. CJ, Ken, don't encourage them. Yeah, right. Kid, you got any more questions? I got one more for this round. All right. Just yeah. keep going. Okay, Elton, uh, one of our new mods. At Dog Father's Barbecue, wants to know, Jabin, do you know the American meaning of the phrase "going postal"? <laughs> yes, and in fact, if you type in uh, "postal" into YouTube back, I guess maybe a few years ago, it was uh, a video game called like Postal Postal One, Postal Two, and it was just like. Full of full on guns and violence and blood and yeah, that's <laughs> kind of horrible. horrible. All I right, it's, hey, we I, have we have another Canadian in our midst. Michael Rizzi just dropped a fifty dollar Canadian super show. fifty so Canadian dollars. Cheers, Michael. He's the one that I just put him on all my Instagram. He's wearing uh, kids. CJ's crew shot or uh, shirt, not shot. Sorry, cheers, cheers, Michael. Appreciate it, buddy. Michael, I think that means we're winning. The Canadians right? are winning. The Canadians, the Canadians are winning uh, versus <laughs> Americans. And well, and end of the day, it actually costs us more money to have to win to be able to win. So it's true. So uh -huh. any other Canadians in there? Like, let's let's represent. Well, usually we have we used to have Scott from In from the Grill in there. He was our Canadian brother out there, but yeah, he kind of jumped off the YouTube bandwagon for a bit. He he was on the Canadian West Coast also. He's oh yeah. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Lewis Florida. from our shack, he's about, I want to say, three hours from there. Yep. So I, I don't yeah, what, remember the exact town Scott lived in. Yes, uh, Kelowna. There, uh, yeah, there you go. I yeah. know. I should know. I sent him some, uh, the Cajun injector, the Creole butter. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the little prick was supposed to make a pork loin video and never did. Nice. <laughs> uh, you know, someone sent that a long time ago too, and I still haven't made a video with it. So it will come out one day. All right. Um, I see Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. We're talking about rubs and, and butter basting or whatever. Uh, Joe, get at me about Victory Lane, buddy. Uh, we talked about it last week, dude. I, uh, See, I've been talking to him about it for three months, and he hasn't done anything. That's true. All right. Pickles got timed out, finally. Good Lord, son. I sent you a message like an hour ago. I don't look at your shit when we're live. Come on. We have private chat on this thing. Use right, it. but it's on my little bitty phone with my big fat fingers. Uh, and I don't all, want to all I'm hearing right now are excuses. All right, you're done. You're done. All right, it's my turn. Uh, I want to announce a couple people in the chat. Bad Beast Barbecue, Daryl's in there. Ken Rogers, John from 1984 Barbecue. Obviously, Canadian Jim, we talked about him. Uh, smoking, uh, tips and recipes. Melvin Crosby, Crosby. Uh, Papa Texas PT's in the house, small town barbecue. Welcome you all. Appreciate y'all being here. Kent, feel free to come back. I am sorry if I hurt your feelings. All right, uh, let's do this giveaway real quick. All right, so right now I am looking at, I have my chat up. It is the live chat, not the top chat. It doesn't matter what your chat says. It's what mine says. So whoever answers this question first and I pull them out, that's the winner. So don't tell me that you were first or they were first. What I look at is mine. You know why? Because it's my show, and that's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right, I see Kent's shoulder. I think he needs to scooch over a little bit. Kent, we love you, boo. Come, come back. Come back. come back, Kent. You're welcome here. We, we, we miss you. We appreciate you. We're sorry. We're sorry, Kent. That shirt looks amazing on you. That hat is even better. You're a tall drink of water. You are right there. And your logo behind me, behind you, kind of, sort of, uh, not really behind you, is kind of the tattoo that I want to get. That's awesome. All right. A- Keeping it Dutch is in the house. Welcome, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Appreciate it. All right. So the giveaway. We did. I see something in my private chat. Hold on one second. Oh, there it is. Oh, never mind. Sorry, it was Jaden. All right. <laughs> it was I was like, you can't figure it out. Sweet. Uh, let's see here. Guys, so we asked a couple questions at the beginning. Uh, so <laughs> if you, whoever puts the name or the, the correct answer in the, in the chat first that I see will win uh, the four-pack of seasonings from Sweet Smoky Joe and a, and a sauce of their choice. All right. So I know the answer. I already know the answer. You I know, know the question. answer. You are ineligible to play. All right. Uh, Kent, you're eligible to play if you want to jump in there, buddy. Boo Boo Bear, we miss you. All right. Boo Boo Bear. Hey, Tom Horseman, welcome, brother. Welcome. Uh, better late than never. Uh, we're about an hour in. You doing all right there, Jimmy? Oh, I'm doing great. All right, cool. We're going to keep going then. All right. So, question is. What is Jabin's kid's hamster's name? <laughs> the hamster's name, guys. The household hamster's name. Wait for it. Wait for it. Nope, you're wrong, Dutch. Children and with Rob B's in the house. Tom's Food Factory, Everett. There it is. Tom's Food Factory is the big winner. So, CJ, I just, I just private chatted you the actual name um in case i didn't it, i didn't pronounce it properly uh no you got it or pretty good you got it okay good we get it so tom's food factory tom send me a message and i'll get your address to uh sweet smoky joe all right well stan <laughs> all right so stan thank you for uh being a sponsor of the show tonight uh i hope we can work together again in the future 
and uh, get uh, Kent some more rubs because he clearly does not have enough of the Sweet Smoky Joe products. Kent, get your butt back in the screen. I see your Shut face. Up, I'm right here, you. I see your face. Don't be a baby. I see your middle finger too. That's, that's not very nice. All right. <laughs> we'll get back to my questions now. All right. Well, one of my questions is when did you get started on YouTube? That was 2013. You answered that question already. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah. So, all right. So let's talk about how did you get started? What kind of drove it? I know you were part of, you know, you, you this is your business, you know, film production. Just kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. So when I got started with uh, YouTube, it actually was like uh, almost – in line when I started my production company. Um, I just, I fell in love with it. I figured it out and just kind of kept rolling with it. The YouTube end of things um, happened when I was working uh, in a church as a pastor. And I was just kind of like getting tired of, you know, going to work and not then coming home and just not having anything to do, not having any real hobbies. And I'm like, I remember talking to my wife thinking like, I need, I need a new hobby. I've always loved barbecuing. How can I sort of like do that? But then I stumbled across barbecue pit boys. I'm like, interesting. And so that was sort of uh, the beginning of, of all of that where I started to, I pulled my, my phone out to film a few things and posted it. My first brisket video, if you go back is terrible. Um, it didn't pass the finger test, um, like the Ben test. It was hard. It, it was nasty. Thank, uh, hold on. Thanks for clarifying the Ben test. Uh, not the finger <laughs> test. I'm dying over here. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Joe, where are you at? Where are you at? Come on, Joe. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Who else wants to jump on that one? <laughs> wow. Can, hey, can we go edit that out? <laughs> yeah, go back on that one. Sometimes they just don't pass the finger test, huh, Jamie? So <laughs> it's hard and nasty. <laughs> oh my god! We should get them in Canada. We <laughs> Canadians, we we would know though what that meant. Come on, guys. Yeah, hey, there you go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in a live chat, like, <laughs> I don't care. Um, what was I say? Okay, so bad brisket. Did not be. Brisket was terrible. Um, my friends loved it because they'd never had brisket before. And whatever. Um, but then I, I kept on. I kept on sort of dabbling with that as well as like dabbling in video production and just in general. And then uh, our second son was born, and he. We soon discovered that he had. had uh, I think at the time, like twelve different food allergies, and. And so this is like milk, or sorry, dairy, fish, um, peas, um, r really everything that's in anything. And so we're like, for a while there, we, he couldn't really eat anything that was like bought from the store. It was like, if it was grown in a garden or came from a field, that was sort of what he could eat. And so that's where, that's where I started to like, really do a lot more cooking on the barbecue because I'm like, at least I know he can eat this stuff. Um, and so it really, my education on how to start cooking meat properly um, really came from, from that. And because I was learning um, quite steep, uh, quite a steep learning curve with it. Um, I, it kind of just forced me to keep making videos. Uh, and for a while it was like, I would make videos so I'd have a record on how, on how to do it again, right? And I don't know if that's similar to you guys, but like I still go back to old videos and like how to make my barbecue sauce. I, I, I couldn't tell you unless I went to an old video. And <laughs> well, you know, you're right. Someone actually commented on one of my old videos asking what I use for a braising liquid, which I did have it in the description, but I couldn't remember offhand. I actually yeah. had to go watch the video and be like, oh, wait, yeah, that's what I did. And there it is. So Yeah, and it's it became like a record, really. And so yeah. I just – I really enjoyed it. Almost like uh, T-Roy, T-Roy Cooks. Like he once said, like, he started making videos for his son who moved out yeah. of the house. 
and just to show him like how to cook and cook for himself. For me, it was like to to cook something that my kid would really enjoy because he's always loved. He's the meat guy of the family, uh, and it might be because of of that he couldn't really eat a whole uh, a lot of other things. But um, it really sort of helped me move further uh, in my meat and barbecue culinary cooking experience. I, like growing, I, I always tell people as well, like I graduated high school because of the cooking classes and so, and the art courses. And so like art and foods bring them together and that's what YouTube is. Right. And right. so it just kind of like escalated and I just kind of, I just kept going and going. And like, you look at, you look at the, my history and it's not like, I don't have weekly videos. Uh, I think the, the longest stretch I've had was like, 17 weeks in a row and that's over the winter because i'm not as busy with with work and but it's like i i cook what i can i i make new recipes i try new recipes when i can and it just kind of keeps going you know right. I mean, it's not like a, like a year long uh, end game it's like 10 years and that's that's sort of i got started just knowing that this is something i just wanted to do for me and for my kids, yeah, very cool. No, that's cool. Uh, can you uh, give me the floor for us ignorant Americans? Can you explain to us the finger? Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just where the brisket goes over the finger. <laughs> oh, okay. See, yeah. down here we use our slicing knife to hold it. Okay, so use the slicing test, the slicing knife test. Yes, because uh, there's a lot of a lot of talk in the chat about two one, two and one, one and the other. Shocker! Oh my God, where where did this thing go to? What are we doing here? Hey, I just you made you're just in the chat. I understand. I, I started it. I started it, and I apologize, Jaden. I think Dave, it's Dave. hilarious. You have me crying in the country. That's why there's two different countries. You know, Canadians were more polite and respectable. And <laughs> oh, is that why all our democratic celebrities wanted to move there three years ago? Okay, gotcha. I want to move there. I want to move there for the the Tim Hortons. Tim, uh, no, you, no, really no, you really don't. You want to move here because or move from here because of Tim Hortons. <laughs> I hear the coffee. You're talking to like a craft guy, like craft coffee, craft <laughs> beer, craft whiskey. Um, I don't know the last time I've had Crown Royal because I'm like, there's way better craft whiskey out there. Well, yeah. Yeah. I drink it because it's cheap and it's easy, just like can't. Yeah. What? You're saying I'm cheap and easy? <laughs> well. I'm, hey, I might be easy, but I ain't cheap, mister. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, let's see here. Are you are you done with the floor, my friend? Yeah, go ahead. I just uh, had to answer that. No, nah, it's very funny, man. Very funny. All right, man. Uh, so obviously you've been doing it for a, for a bit of a time now. What's kept you on the grind? Like, I, I you you're, you make a living off your production company, so you you do this. What what is what's what's keeping you going, man? I think it's because it's like a big game of chess. Okay. Like, you know, when, when you put a video out and you like coming from a, like, especially a background, uh, pre video SEO, uh, you know how like a couple of years ago, video SEO and the strategy really became like trendy in the YouTube community. Right. Right. So like, because I was a part of that, like four or five years ago and even, even giving Sean, Canal tips um, as we were sort of like sharing information of what we've been learning uh, because, because I've learned how to, I learned how to do that a long time before it became trendy. Uh, it, for me, it's just a big game of chess. Uh, and that's one of the things that I love, like making a video that, that looks good, that sounds good, that has amazing looking food, but then also having, trying to see where it lands in its ranking for me is like, that's what I love is the is the the detail that goes into the release just as much as the detail in the creation of the content right. and 
you know, and the, when when a video doesn't do so well in the ranking, I'm like, okay, what do I need to do to sort of change that and um, the strategies that need to go in, into place to you know maybe make it go from the second second page to the first page. That's one of the things that that really motivates me to keep keep going. And that um, along with uh, probably a long time ago, I had I did have a personal goal um, for monetization. And even it was like I always told myself, I'm like I want to make a thousand dollars a month off of YouTube, right. because that at the time that was the amount of cash we were spending. Uh, every month on groceries for our family, like got right. three boys and a wife. There's five of us, you know. We're we're above and beyond that that now, but like I always said, I'm like I want to make I want to make a thousand bucks a month off of YouTube, um, and so for me that was also another another goal or, or it was a goal that kept me going, and yeah. I think now uh, because it's the lines that have totally blurred. Really know what what's what <laughs> in terms of where right. dollars are coming from, and you know, is it am I doing this project because of of this channel or um, yeah? And so, so there's I'm trying to find the other motivating pieces, and I think for me right now, it's it's um, over the past year I've had to really evaluate some of that and think. You know, why am I actually making the content? And I keep coming back. The content that I'm creating is for me. Um, right. It's my own enjoyment. It's and I want to I want to put it out into the world. But end of the day, I'm cooking. I'm cooking things that I want to cook. I want to experience. I want to taste. I want to have that experience with right. And but also, you know, again, going back to, will that experience cause a good ranking? Will that experience, you know, add to um, views, which ultimately comes through to that other goal of, of monetization, and, right. and so there's, there's a few things that come into play. But end of the day, like when I put a new video, I love it. Like it's it's a high that it's like my wife is a musician, and whenever she puts out a new song into the world, um, like even on, like on Instagram, um, it's like it's a high for her. You know, or first time playing it live in at a pub or something. It's there's that there's that bit of a hype when you put a video out. You get that same sense where it's like you're you're you might not be on YouTube for for the past few days, but you're all of a sudden on it for a few hours, just kind of like tracking things and getting yeah. excited at what's what you're doing. So well, hey, I would love to talk to you about in not on the show right now. There he goes again. We, we lost Javen. <laughs> no worries. I had, um, I had a battery, a battery died in a in a light there. So, uh, I would love to talk to you about the algorithm. Maybe we could do even like a special show about that. Um, but I I I don't say I, I don't think I have YouTube figured out. I don't. I really don't. But I do the things that I felt like I've learned to do. You know, I put out the quality or. I feel like I put out quality, not the best, but you know, I feel like I do some good stuff. I put out quantity, like everybody says you're supposed to do. I want to learn, you know, and I do the tags. I do SEO tags. I search tags, you know, and it just doesn't come fast enough for me. And I, I, I would like to learn more about how you finesse the algorithm. So I would love to talk about that another time. Uh, but I do see we got a couple more people in the chat, and one of them is Mega Fred Zeppelin. Uh, Mega Fred is the one, the lifetime question. Mega Fred, he enjoys the Foo Fighters. So, yes, yes the Foo Fighters. Uh, Dan from Smoky Goodness is in the house. Welcome, Dan. He's one of our moderators. Appreciate you being here. Uh, whiskey and barbecue. Ryan's here. Ryan just got a, a year, just celebrated a year anniversary. On YouTube with whiskey and barbecue, so very good. Uh, I think that's all I've seen. Kind of jumping in the chat, we got we got thirty two in the chat. What, Kent, what are you doing? Man? Uh, my speaker just went to low battery, so I'm uh, trying to get shit squared away so I can ignore you and hear our guest. Fair enough. All right, so. Uh, yeah. All right. So Ryan said the same thing. He he would he would love to have. Fuck it. Can't, I'm gonna mute you for a second, but um, I would love to have whatever. 
he would love to have a, a conversation on the God. I love you, Kent. Like seriously, one day I'm gonna give you a big old big old squeeze for sure. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do we'll do a little hangout and chat about yeah, that. Would, that would be a lot of fun. And you know, just a disclaimer: like what I do um, changes all the time, and so I'm yeah. still. I, I have the foundation uh, that I've been able to to use over the over a number of years, but I'm also having to you know relearn what might be happening within the algorithm, as well as like what I when I post a video or make a video, it's often for searching specifically, which is a downfall because you're not making content ne that's necessarily as viral. Like I look yeah. at content that uh, Justin's putting out, Baby Back Maniac, and like, it's, there's amazing storytelling uh, in it, and the yeah. content in it, and the, the creative quality is unreal. But you're not going to find it uh, as easily just searching, just like the average person searching that, that doesn't know his channel. Right. Right. The, so how the, do you blend those two together? Right? Right. Yeah. That's, it's, that's it's, it's you're talking about like the pimp my grill stuff and and uh my grill stuff like no one's gonna be ser searching pimp my grill right but they're finding him because of his his content and you yeah. know you create high quality content um that has value um that's searchable um that's engaging that's um I don't know. You, you put all those pieces together, and you're going to create something that's you're going to knock one apart with. Yeah, yeah. So. He's got. He's definitely got a special way about him too. I love watching yeah. stuff. I actually get to meet the guy in October. Uh, we're going right. to go to VidCon in LA. Uh, he's Ooh. flying out. Uh, Greg from Ballistics uh, driving out there, and I think Cosmo Q. We're that's all meeting up. So it's going to be uh, or Darian uh, Cosmo Q. So. We're gonna yeah, be, uh, that's going to be a good time right there. Uh, I should come. I can't wait, dude. Uh, I'll send you the link. It, it's, it, I'm excited to go. I've been wanting to go for a while, but I just I don't have a passport, so I can't. Oh, well, yeah, you might need one of those. I mean, okay. you, you know, the way Trump's kicking out people, you never know. So you can always come not the part. It's not political. I'm not. You maga people in the chat. Relax. All right. Um, all right. So. Obviously, you kind of do this for a living, but is there an end result? Is there a new goal for you? I mean, you hit, you know, the thousand bucks per month, whatever. Is there a new goal or what are you trying to do with this besides world domination like everybody else? Yeah, so I, I've only hit the thousand dollars a month once. Um, uh, I, that's because of my monetization. I, I really don't like to monetize like mid video. Uh, it's like beginning. That's it. Um, right. And then affiliate links, whatever. Right. Um but right now, it's it's more about like trying to how how do I grow this? It's it's through through brand sponsorships. It's through working with right. companies that, uh, and then how do I grow my business? Right, it's sort of kind of one and the same. Essentially, it's use having brand brands find me on the one, and then transferring them over to the production of of content. And so right. now we're partnering here but also doing actual content here. Um, that's sort of like, that's sort of the, the end goal uh, that I've really discovered over, over the past year, I think. Uh, I think working with Adrenaline Barbecue really sort of got me thinking in that direction. And right. because that's, that was a, a piece where it was like, there's, there's barbecue content and production content coming in together. Right. You know, and so, yeah. All right. Well, that's that's cool. Uh, how did that? Really, I may have I may have skirted your question a bit. No, um, by no, no, no. I mean, I I get what you're saying. It's it's more broad than just a, you know, one, uh, one thing. You know, one answer type thing. You know, my goal is world domination. That's one answer. You have a broader goal, right? So, uh, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, um, I don't. I, I've really thought about that before. I mean, I'd love, I would love to do, I would love to do YouTube specifically right. full time uh, for myself. Right. And, but when I've done it full time for with, um, when I've done it full time or essentially full time 
um, not for myself, that's when I've, I've found it to be a struggle because it's just, you're doing it for different reasons, right? From different reasons from when you, for why you got, why you got started in, in all together. Right. 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 Wow. Yeah. Um, Kent, did you Kent. see Lois's question? Do you want me to ask it or you got it under control? Well, that didn't sound good. You okay, Kent? Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yeah, we hear you now. Yeah. Um, Lois wants to know, are you guys all uh, home barbecue cooks? Or does anybody have a, I believe a restaurant is what she said. I'm looking for her comment right now. Right. Um, Lois, for the most part, it's you, I, I got a reverb from you again, Ken. So I'm a home barbecue, Jeff. Yeah. All right. So you're a home barbecue. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm a home chef type way. I don't think there's anybody in the chat that has uh, like an actual restaurant. There's people that do catering. Um, it's not all barbecue, uh, Lois. Uh, I have anybody and everybody. Uh, that wants to come on this channel, usually cooking creators, but we've had many people that are not barbecue, but we do have a large barbecue YouTube cooking community. So that's what you'll see mostly in here, Lois. So, but I do appreciate you being here. I do. Um, yeah. I appreciate everybody being here. I mean, we have 36 in the chat right now. Uh, chef is celebrating tonight. So chef, if you catch this chef, Johnny from uh, Texas style barbecue and cuisine, uh, just announced that his daughter got engaged. So, uh, welcome, uh, Mazel Mazel. Uh, good, good, good for you having a new son-in-law coming your way. That's exciting. Uh, see you here, um, Chris from Eastwood Farms. I've seen you being timed out quite a few times. I feel like you're trying to poke the bear tonight on uh, Kent. Let's take it easy on Kent tonight. Or are you going to keep getting put on timeout, Chris? Let's be careful. Well, on a on a good note, he set a new uh, a new record for being timed out in one show. Really? How many yeah, times? he beat he beat uh, cooking with Corey, and uh, <laughs> just for just for that. Okay, now it's up to five. Is the record five? All right, there's the record. All right, that's awesome. All right, um, before we go back to Kent. Um, uh, we kind of touched on it a little earlier, but this is one of my questions. What is one piece of advice you would give a new YouTuber? First thing you tell them to do. And, and yeah. uh, and I put a comment up for you. There you go. Oh, you can't fucking read it. <laughs> um, I would say the first uh, piece of advice would be to cook what you love. Um. And do what you love. Because end of the day, if you're like you'll as you grow, you'll always have people telling you what, what you should cook and how you should make your content. And my I really firmly believe that if we do what we love, we'll never work a day in our life. And so if we if we're cooking what we what we want and filming it the way we want and releasing it the way we want, then it's not gonna be work. It's right. just gonna be it's going to continue to be uh, something fun that we do for ourselves. And, but so that's the first piece that I would tell, tell you to do. The second, I would say to um, make quality content, uh, push yourself, uh, always be looking for how you can make your content better. You know, maybe it's uh, going from one camera to one camera and a light, uh, light and audio, uh, maybe there's two cameras and light and audio. Maybe it's moving up from like, you know, choice cuts to prime cuts, even though on camera, it doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, in my, I've never really used prime cuts. I've only, the, the best the best type of meat I've ever used was when uh, making videos with adrenaline. Um, and because we wanted to show, show the, the meat a little bit differently. Um, personally though, like I've, I'd shop the sales and oh, yeah. meat doesn't really matter to me. Like it's obviously it's going to, it's going to change the flavor and the taste, but presentation on camera, 
you know, a, a glazed rib is going to look like a glazed rib. Yeah. You know, I'm with you. And so it doesn't really matter. And you can, you can always, even if it doesn't taste exactly like how you might want it or how it, it was supposed to taste in your mind, you know, like that doesn't really matter. It's, it's all about the, the visual look of it. And so, um, yeah, cooking what you, cooking what you want. Um, what is the other thing I said? Cooking what you want. Pushing, pushing your own limits and you know, raising the bar for yourself uh, so that you can, you can always be growing as a creator uh, because it's when we stop growing as a creator that we, we plateau and, you know, and, and that growth might even just be as simple as like how we do our intros and outros. If we do intros and outros, you know, maybe it's just, you know, making them more solid, making them more punchy, you know, bringing more of a hook to it. Uh, but just sort of always evaluating what you're doing to to make it a little bit better for the next time. Because we can, we can always learn from our, our past, right? If we're not learning from our past, then we're not growing. And yeah. so always be growing, always be pushing yourself, always be looking for the joy in what you're doing. And because when you start losing the joy of it all, uh, that's when you start to slow down. And that's when, when uh, things just sort of stagnate. Right, right. So how did you, I mean, talk about always be closing, uh, always <laughs> adrenaline barbecue company, ABC. How did you get involved with working with them? Yeah, it's a funny story because it was, uh, it was Justin that connected me with them. Um, he uh, sent me a message one day and she's like, hey, I've, um, I know uh, I have a, a friend who has a product uh, that I think you would really like. And because um, I do reviews and like product reviews and seo it's like a lot of my 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 um product reviews are higher ranked videos because the nature of the video right there's less competition and easier to rank um so he sent me a product to try as a lot of companies do right and and i loved it it was great um, I don't think it's ever left my grill since that, since it came in the mail like a year and a half ago. Um, right. You know, because like it was for me, it was just sort of a a game changer in in my in my personal cooking workflow. Right. And then one thing led to another, where it's like you again kind of found out went from the barbecue world to production world, and it's like okay, let's let's start merging things to this this side. What can we do for you so at that time justin was sort of um moving he was taking a little bit of a break from creating content just mm. can't remember can't remember, can't, can't remember why um but end of the day there was that gap that needed, needed to be filled and so i jumped into the gap and um started to make contents under the production and um which is why it's at the time it looked a little bit different than my content because it was, you know, extra camera, some lighting, uh, different right. audio and just some, a little more polished looking. Right. Yeah. Of course. I, uh, I actually interviewed Dave on the hot seat, you know, year back or so. He, yeah, sent, me, he sent me a, a song here. I, I dig it. Right. I don't think it's exactly. the be all end all, but it hasn't left my grill except once. I got the rotisserie, so I use yeah. my grill baskets on both sides. But I, I dig it too; works out fine. Uh, Kent came up with his own gadget that I think yeah. you should take a look at. I uh, saw it. the Bro and Sear trademark Kent Vandy Weird Productions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, definitely, I definitely saw it. I'm like, huh? That's that's interesting. That um, is- I just, a company reached out to me just like two weeks ago and it was like a, a knockoff of the slow and sear. I had um, the wall uh, with the space for the coal and then a little bit of a flat space that you put like a water tray on. Right. And I, I'm like, guys, you know, there's a product is like the same price too. I'm like, you know, there's a product out there that that <laughs> is better for both the same price and you can send me one to try out, but I highly like or highly doubt it that it's going to make it on a video. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. 
because it's just the nature of of the two products like side by side i'm like this is this is a amazing compared to this one even though it's like similar technology um yeah. well have you have you been approached about getting that kamado um the new slow sir kamado yeah, slow kamado yeah it's <laughs> yeah. uh i think it's more time place country um yeah it's i have i actually um have something up my sleeve a little bit um All right. hey don't give too much away. Make no, people I pay for it. I don't know if I can, uh, but it's it's a company in Canada that um, just needs some against like production stuff, um, and so yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. It might make some heads turn a little bit, um, <laughs> but you know, end of the day, it's um, it'll be great. Right. And the comment I left for you today was like. You know, cook inside, cook outside, cook on charcoal, cook on gas, cook on pellets. Doesn't really matter. Like it's end of the day, you cook and you make great food with how you how you how you need to cook with. Exactly. How you, exactly. I, I, I everybody understands what you're saying there. Um, real quick, Chef Johnny jumped in the chat. So everybody, give a congratulations to Chef Johnny for uh, acquiring your son-in-law or almost son-in-law. So. Mazel Mazel Chef. Good stuff for you, brother. Appreciate it. Right. Um, I'm going to jump in here for a second. You guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll, I need like a 30 second. Uh, there's someone at the door. That's what we said. There's, there's a refill that needs to happen. Hang on. Uh, Kent, how you doing? I heard, uh, um, I heard uh, Chris from Eastwood Farms says he wants to stop poking you. So hopefully we stop him off right now. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I'm getting – it's kind of dark over here. I'm going to add oh, add some lighting. Well, welcome to the uh, Cooking with Daddy Dutch show since everybody else left. If you have questions for <laughs> CJ, please tell him he's an idiot for not being prepared. I didn't realize it was going to get this dark up in here. Usually um, it's not that bad. It's – what? 7.30 in California? No, it's just, you're used to it? Yeah. It's August 1st? You've had two months to prepare? Summer you know, weather? I don't, I, don't, I don't need your sass right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, Chef Johnny, welcome, buddy. We're, we're all happy for you, man. That's, uh, that's very cool, man. I mean, as long as you dig the guy, as long as it's cool for you, then we, we dig it for you, buddy. <laughs> So I, cool. I, I did like uh, Tom's food factory comment. What's that? In the messenger, he said, Chef, did you make sure he's not a vegan? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I do want to, you know, we alluded to it earlier. I do want to have a little kind of algorithm roundtable type thing. Uh, I was about to say, you know, right before we go to Kent, the, I, I find that the SEO tags aren't, as big of a deal as they used to be. Um, I think titles and thumbnails are a big deal, but I would love to get more into that. So I'm definitely going to look to schedule something soon. Okay, Devin? I, yeah, I, I'm very interested in that. On the screen. What's that? How many people can we fit on the screen? We can get six people in here. Okay. So, so I, might, I might have some recommendations on people to bring in from my – uh, experience of looking looking at their channel. Okay, uh, how about um, Sean Cannell? Let's get Sean I'll, Cannell in here. <laughs> I'll ask. I'll ask him. I can, Yeah, we. I mean, we chat. We we chat. We're actually due for for a chat. Um, yeah. I, I agree with that guy. There's just something about that cat that uh, you know he doesn't seem as phony. He doesn't seem like he's trying as hard as some other people are. Um, yeah. You know, you get what I'm saying. You know, there's oh, people that have tried really hard and. Uh, he, he's, he's pretty genuine. Oh, he's very genuine. And he's from uh, Vegas. So some of you might be around his area. I'm, I'll be in Vegas next weekend. So if he wants to chat. Actually, next Thursday's hot seat is going to be from Vegas. Um, oh, cool. I mean, I'm going to be doing the interview. Uh, with the person. It's actually Blevin from uh, West Coast Cajun. All right, Ken, are you ready to get to work? 
Not really. I I truly have somebody knocking at the door. So hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will ask you another question. All right. Uh, this is a question I always ask. I'm sure you've heard it. But and this is a play all for everybody in the chat. You know, chime in. If Hollywood were gonna make a movie about you and your life, your channel, whatever, who's playing Jabin? And I know they do a lot of filming in Vancouver and Toronto, so if you want to use those, feel free. Um, uh, Canadian actors. Keanu Reeves, I can see it. There you go. No, Ryan Reynolds is my favorite Canadian. Well, I, I don't enjoy Ryle, uh, Ryan Reynolds' uh, content. Um, I would say he's not Canadian, but I would say Christian Bale. Christian he's Bale. If you if you look at his uh, his portfolio, it's it's uh, somewhat serious but somewhat fun. Um, I tend to gravitate to like I really enjoyed life, uh, but I'm also like somewhat serious, and depending on the situation. And so I think he would be a good. And he's like he he played Batman. Yeah, there you go. All right, let me tell you people that are that are chiming okay. in the chat. We have Keanu Reeves, uh, that Canadian actor, which whatever that means. Justin Bieber, oh. thing. Martin Short. I think Martin's a little too old. Bill Shatner, definitely too old. Doogie Howser, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, maybe. Uh, David Spade, Papa <laughs> Texas said Pee Wee Herman. Tom Cruise yeah. with no hair. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. You, know, you want me to tell you who I've who I've uh, looked to, like people tell me I look alike uh, over the years. So the most recent was Dax Shepard. Yeah, I got that. I can He's see like, that. 100%. Hang on, let's block my head. Just block it yeah, exactly. Hang on. Someone said uh, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> she has hair. Just yeah, like you know. yeah. Um, I've also got, uh, uh, and he's Canadian, um, the guy who played Austin Powers. What's his name? Mike, Mike Meyer. Mike Meyer. Mike Meyer. So that's when I had longer, longer hair. Right. Um, as well as I've gotten uh, a lot over, like when I was younger, uh, young adult era, um, Jimmy Fallon as well. Oh, I can so, see Fallon. I mean, with no hair. I can see Fallon. I can see hair. Fallon. Yeah, for sure. But this All is, right. uh, I think I see, this is the, the most recent fellow. Who's that? That's Dax Shepard. Oh, Dax Shepard. Okay, I can barely see it on there. And it was, it's I the eye. Dax, I can see Fallon. I, I got you, man. You're good. <laughs> I got some sorry. Uh, that is, that's good. All right, Kent, you're up, buddy, as long as you're done with whatever's at the door. Yeah, wrong number. <laughs> All right. Um, Rob's Pit Barbecue wants to know, Jabin, what is the main grill that you cook on? Uh, that would be the Weber 22-inch kettle. Hands down. Um, okay. I really enjoy the pit barrel cooker, but the thing I don't enjoy about it is that I can't do like a two, three hour cook without wasting a lot of coals. You say that right now. I cook before the show three racks of ribs on my pit barrel. Still have plenty of coals left out. I don't know how to snuff it out. On the exactly. kettle, you can shut the vents. You're good to go. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry. So I, I, I agree. I have I have figured out how to do like a four hour cook, but I haven't figured out how to f like make it a consistent cook. Right, there's, it always fluctuates and there's too many variables, and so yeah, it's just a bit. I really like cooking on it though, and it's. But it's damn, like, those ribs turned out awesome though. For oh, I bet it's a rib machine. <laughs> uh, Kent, I'm sorry to interrupt, Kent. God, you look like you're having a night tonight, Kent. Like, I feel like you need a big squeeze through the, you know, come here, buddy. I feel like, I feel like you need a, a another shot just because you need another shot. Not yeah, because yeah, we need a super shot for Kent. Yeah. Oh, he's and giving away the cow and he gets milk free or something like that. I'm giving away the cow for free. Hell with it. So, but speaking of that, is that are, – are the Canadians still winning at 50 bucks? No, I think uh, Mike Montoya pushed it over the top with his 29-29 shot. So it's okay. kind of like it's Jabin. It's kind of like hockey. Canadians like, only win when the Americans let them. 
Oh, see. Oh, if only you knew hockey. <laughs> I hate hockey. I really hate hockey. I just want to go to the hockey matches. I don't understand it, and I can't ice skate. That's why I and beat I the shit out of football guys here. So. Yeah, we're, we're all football guys here. But I like going to hockey games, whatever, because they fight. Like, they just throw down like crazy. We were sitting, we were sitting right next to the penalty box, and dudes got put in there for fighting. And then the time, the two minutes or whatever it was, ran up, jumped right out, started beating the shit out of each other again. You know, it was just exactly. the one down. And they want, to, they want to take fighting out of hockey. I mean, come on, that's part of this Why history. Do that? Apparently, the fair, the very first hockey game ever, in a brawl. Oh yeah. If it can't take. No. No. All right, King, but, go ahead with your questions, buddy. Uh, Chef just put one in there, too. Yeah, uh, Chef wanted to know why. Uh, you go ahead and take that one. Okay, uh, Chef, um, Google Hangouts goes away today. All right, so I had to find a new way of doing these live streams. So we're using something called uh, StreamYard. And the most people we can get in the Hangout uh, in the actual screen will be six people. We could have ten people all together, but four of them are waiting, okay? So this is what we have to do, and this is why it's showing up a little different and why we got graphics and names and stuff like that. So it's what we had to do because Google Hangouts are going away, but it's a lot crisper, a lot clearer. I really like being able to put logos up there. Um, <laughs> the names, I love putting the names up there. The chat, we can do a lot of stuff. Uh, um, yeah, I knew that it was leaving. Okay. All right. Um I see a lot of TB12 and AR12. I'm with you on AR12. I like Rogers better than Brady. I'm just throwing it out there. I hope that doesn't piss off Johnny Max. Okay. Football? Yeah, football, football. Okay, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, real football where the yard the, the field's 100 yards long, not 110. You play with 11, <laughs> not 12. Don't, Do you, don't we have football, you know, football? I think we have bigger balls. I doubt it. It's colder up there. I'm pretty sure we have bigger balls. Yeah, the same yeah. size. Ball. Look it up. Canadian sized balls. <laughs> no, I'm not. All I right. Not right. Not on my account. We got, we got to pop bigger balls on. All right. All right, Kate. Let's ask some questions now. We're, we're going on two hours. All right. Uh, Melvin Crosby. Wants to know, Javen, do you know uh, David Grohl, G-R-O-H-L, big-time smoker up in Canada, thinks possibly he has a Lang. Have you heard of that name? No, I haven't. I thought he was talking uh, about the lead team. What did I tell you about fires. short answers, Kevin? What was that, Ken? <laughs> I said, what did I tell you about short answers? Well, I was just thinking, like, a lot of people from the States think that we know everyone, right? And so it's like they also think we live in igloos and, um, you know, just because just because we live in Canada or I live in Canada doesn't mean that we know so-and-so. And, uh, but <laughs> I, I guarantee you Canadian Jim lives in an ig igloo. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> I've talked to that before, and it didn't really work out. Um, but no, I have. I've never heard of this. Heard of this person? I would love to. Um, um, Ken, if you can get information, put it into our chat because we're not actually on the other chat. Um, that I'll I'll take a look at it because I'm curious now. Because because honestly, everyone everyone that I know that uh, from Canada that that barbecues or smokes or cooks uh, outside specifically. Um, it's always fun to meet. Like that was, there was a guy uh, on my island that reached out, and he's like probably an hour and a half away, and he's like, he's like, dude, like you, you keep mentioning like island, and I see island type content from your your channels, and like, are you on Vancouver Island? And we figured out that we were literally like an hour and a half away, and he had, I guess, had been following uh, Postal Barbecue for you know a couple of years. Uh, since or uh, leading up to that point, it was like it was so cool, uh, and it's partly because there's this like there's culture because Canadians we don't grill a lot like 
compared to the States. Uh, we're more like propane grillers, uh, hot and fast burgers, steak, um, tri tip. I'll say because we're West coast. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> He's, all, he's about to drop a west side pretty soon. West side. <laughs> no, we do. We do um, I, don't, I can't remember the fingers, but it's like west coast, best coast. Uh, that's our that's our thing. Because, I mean, <laughs> CJ, you're from the west coast. You understand. Yeah, I do. If I knew how to throw up a dub, I would. But I, I my fingers don't bend that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In the chat, they're saying uh, David Grohl of the Foo Fighters. That's what I thought they were talking about, but I didn't know and about he says it's on Lang Smoker's Twitter account that David Grohl has a smoker. Hey, I just I just asked the question. I don't research the shit. Yeah. Come on. So I saw I can't remember whose Instagram account it was, but I saw um the Foo Fighters went to a barbecue competition and did their rounds and they got pictures with, with them sort of like kind of candidly, right? And I thought that was really cool. Um, the fact that they would just be loitering around uh, the competition and, you know, taking pictures with the pitmasters. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I love them prior, but um, yeah, that was like, that was a moment for sure. And I was like, no way. They... Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> All right. I'm catching shit in the chat because I was shaking my head when you said propane. And Ryan says, what is your Blackstone run on again? So I told him charcoal. <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> That's how I got started with all this. Like my first pork butts, my first sets of ribs were all done smoked on a propane grill. And that was using wood chips in a smoke box and, you know, made some pretty dang good food. And you can cook... I, I'm still a firm believer that you can, you know, charcoal is better, is the better route. But, you know, when you only have a propane grill, you can you can utilize it to its full capacity and make, you know, charcoal quality barbecue. You just need to know how to do it. I will agree with you on that because uh, in, oh, shoot, when was it? In May, I was down in Florida. And the place we were staying at had a Weber uh, gas grill, three burner. And I put a foil pack on one side and got some full spares, cut them down, and uh, did ribs that way. Just lit the burner under the foil pack and put the ribs on the other side. And, yeah. you know, honestly, they turned out great. So, yeah, I would, I would almost compare it to like a pellet grill where yeah, you have. Much. You have that kiss of of good flavor, uh, without like the um, without going too heavy on that smoke, like the sort of that neutral. Uh, I don't know if it's the right word to say, but that I would describe it as like neutral smoke flavor, where it's like you don't have you have the smokiness of of the smoke, but you don't have the the aromatic like aroma of of the wood, right? Where pellet grill is very like has that the aroma like you can smell a pellet grill from a block away, uh, you know as a pellet grill. Um, this would be uh, somewhat similar where it's you know it's smoking just enough to to pull out the uh, the aroma of whatever wood you're using without you know dominating the presence of what you're cooking. So, well, before I got my kettle, I only had the gasser, the Weber gasser, right? And that's all I, you know, I had a, like a knockoff Weber kettle when I was like 18 and we moved out of that house, my first apartment or whatever, but didn't know shit to do with it. But I actually reached out to T-Roy, like I wanted to do some smoking on my gasser and he told me about the smoke boxes. You put yeah. little wood chips in there, a smoke box, turned out pretty damn good, you know? Yeah. And I have a feeling that's more like what the pellet, gr pellet grills do too, or pellet cookers. You know, obviously yeah. it's little amounts of wood getting burned up. Yeah, but you still have to burn enough to get the temperature, right? Yeah. And so that, yeah, it's like a buddy of mine has a pellet grill. I would like a pellet grill just for the ease and convenience. Um, but I also would like a propane for the ease and convenience. Like when you're grilling thir minus, I was going to say minus 30, but I don't know if I've ever experienced minus 30 on the island, like maybe minus 10. Uh, so that would be what minus 
38 minus 40 uh, for like Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Uh, are you using that uh, metric shit again? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so like, like on, on the island, we like, we don't get, we get maybe one or two snowfalls a year. Um, and so it's like zero Celsius, which is um, 32, 33. I think it's and so that's our winter that's sort of like would be a, would be a low temperature and so to be able to go outside when it's pouring rain and, and just flip on some gas and cook even have a have a like cooking in the rain in the storm uh at you know you know around the zero around the freezing mark uh and be able to cook some ribs just while the rain's covering the grill uh with a smoke bat smoke poach that would be pretty pretty cool uh, versus like yeah. going out here and having to like finick be finicking, uh, finically working the the charcoal and trying to get it to keep going and you know need to cook a bit hotter because it's colder and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So I right. sold my my propane grill uh, a while. Ago. Actually, I gave it to the guy who built um, that um, wood uh, table that I use in my videos. Mm -hmm. So he. He helped me build it because I, I don't know construction. He helped me build it. We had a great time. I said, dude, take this grill. And it was a beast. It was a workhorse of a grill. Like, it'll be cooking around. You know. Oh. You there, Jamin? I'm there. There he is. There you go. All right. You know, yeah, all right. See, around here we average thirty inches of snow every winter in the Midwest up here in Iowa. So, it uh, CJ, you know, he averages two inches of rain during the winter. So, poor bastard. Let me tell you. And I would love but, that. I, I've always wanted to live in California, by the way. So, one day, one day, I'd I'd go to Northern California. I think they call that Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, as as things dry up, it's it's becoming Washington, and then soon the Comox Valley. There you go. Out. Yeah, we're we're about ten years, uh, twenty years away. Well, pretty soon CJ is going to have uh, oceanfront property when the San Andreas Fault takes the rest of California into the Pacific. You know what sucks? Uh, uh, we're actually on the wrong side of the fault. Like the the hills. You know, we live right close to the foothills. The fault runs right right through there. We're, we're on the wrong side. So we're not getting no shit for our property. We'll be on an island. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't slide off in. Hopefully it's an island. <laughs> be like Hawaii. <laughs> there you go. Well, it, I think that kind of depends who you ask, if you're on the right side or the wrong side. Yeah, right. fair enough. God, so, kids on one tonight. <sighs> It's got to be the shirt. It's the shirt. It's, the shirt. it's uh, definitely the shirt. Ryan from Grill Top Experience is in the house. Welcome, Ryan. How you doing? Ryan, you're how you doing? Back. You're about an hour and a half late, but you may – almost two hours late, actually. You know we're almost at two hours, right, Javen? Yeah, I can see that. You're still good, right? Yeah, we went another three hours to go. All right, cool. We're breaking records tonight. All right. You ready for the next one, Javen? Hang on, I need to um, choose something else. So, any suggestions? This is a just go uh, by APB. APB. Just keep okay. going. The highest, the highest, work your way down. Highest, work your way down. You know, I'm going to actually go the lowest. Really? Because I haven't yeah. had it in a while. Yeah, that's what I'm going on. And it's a uh, it's a wild, a wild IPA. It's got 50 IBUs, 6.5, and it's, I think it's a hazy, a hazy pale. I don't know if you know, but like, I'm a beer guy. It sounds like I it. Love it. So in my, in my production company, we're actually um, compiling a craft beer reel right now um, to try pitch craft breweries and um, even, even going so far to apply for funding to, you know, do a, a documentary series uh, or document, short documentary on, the rise of the craft industry. All right. So, all right. So yeah. we've got a couple of people in the chat asking you to chug that one. Um, how uh, much 
Yeah. How much of a super shot is it going to take? Is it a hundred a hundred dollars Canadian? What's, what's it going to take? I would say I would say two hundred dollars because this is premium. This is like you don't want to wait. Here, right? This in the states is probably like a dollar. Right, <laughs> you're you're being like cheap but not good. This yeah. is like craft local BC wild IPA. It's about five dollars per can. So. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Kenny. All right. Thanks, Steve. Smoking Joe's Pet Barbecue is a lifetime question. If money were no object, Jabin, what uh, cooker or smoker would you have? Oh. That's a really tough question. Because I really, I really love the 22 inch. I might be inclined to say it actually a 26 inch, just because my family size. Uh, but also, you know the guys over at um, uh, All Things Barbecue. They're always using a, a Yoder 500 or 5000 or something like that. 640. Six, like uh, sure, 640. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool to have. Not necessarily for the cooker performance. I'm sure it performs really well, but more the look, the look of it. You know, the fact that it's like, it has this really industrial look. Um, you can start it and cook easily on it. Um, you can cook for large uh, quantities of people. It's going to have great flavor. Uh, it's somewhat versatile. I would love that grill. Um, outside of that, I would love a Kamado of sorts. Um, the Sloan Sir Kamado would be, would be great. Um, the, uh, before the Sloan Sir came out, I, or so, Sloan Sir Kamado came out, I really wanted a red Kamado Joe with all of the accessories. Uh, I'd love, I'd love I'd love that as well. Um, yeah, honestly, right now, like, if I guess if money, that's the thing. If money was not an option, it's it's tough. I'm I'm honestly one of those guys that's really content with what I have, and so the fact that I can I can put out like award winning barbecue on a 22 inch kettle uh, mm -hmm. means a lot and. It means that I can use that money if I had it to do something else. You know, right. it's it's funny is most and funny interesting that a lot of the barbecue channels we talk to say they would choose the Weber kettle over anything if mm -hmm. they needed to. Like put a gun to their head, that's what you could afford, whatever. Weber kettle. Because it really you can do everything with it. So yeah. with that Michael Rizzi, your Canadian friend up north, just put a $50 Canadian super shot in there. So you got to at least take a big old swig if you can get half of it down. Knock yourself okay. Off. okay. God bless you. We're here. Thank you. Two brain cells just hit the concrete. Uh, you have plenty to spare. That's about it. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's worthy of a shot right there. Worthy of a shot. <laughs> Great thing is I still got more. There you go. Stop back up to where it was. Yeah, what what would you guys say? Like, because you guys have grilled on a lot of like I maybe it's because I don't have the experience of cooking on some some other grills. Um, I've I've had the experience of cooking on um, you know, uh, obviously gassers over the years and, and Weber gassers. Right. Uh, the Weber 22. I had the Napoleon 22, which was good for, for like hot um, and almost like Santa Maria style cooking. Right. In terms of slow, it was terrible. Um, it was, it was, I, I shouldn't say it was terrible, but in terms of convenience, it was not very good. You had to regulate right. low temperatures based off of how many coals and how you space them out, essentially. Yeah. Um, that said, I still, I still use product that they sent me, and I love the product. 
So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, if you ask me, I, I would just want the 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 twenty six inch kettle or the the ranch, the the big old kettle, or uh, is that what it's called? The ranch, the ranch. The 30s. Yeah. Well, they got the thirty seven inch ranch. Uh huh. And there's also, if I remember right, there's a 48-inch ranch kettle. And that's a kettle that's two grand. Yeah. To, uh, to me, I just think it's – I'd be afraid to, like, fall into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're, 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 uh, it's so big, and we drink so well. You also have to think of, it like, cost per um, – uh, the cost for what you're getting and what you're needing it for. Right. right. And it's, it's the same with cameras. Like I have, I started shooting with an iPhone. Then I went to this guy. This is the right. S one. Did, 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 did you use Sean's affiliate link to buy it? Yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> um, then I went to this guy. It's like a full phone camera. Right. And then I, and then I downgraded to this guy. Right. And it's like, What's the what's the difference? The the cost is is a lot more because the full frame is like incredibly it's probably twice the price, right? But what I need it for is not there. It's it's too much production, and where I could spend half the price and get something that actually is going to fit my needs. I think that's the thing with that the range, right? It's, it's like unless you're having parties all the time, you're doing catering. There's no need for it. You get the smaller or, or the twenty six. You know, end of the day, it's about what you need it for now, not for what you need it for for the once a year experience, right? Yeah, I yeah. I think I'd also like uh, Joe uh, smoking Joe's pit barbecue. Got that yoder, the, the charcoal yoder thing. I, I don't know the number that goes along with it. Uh, Kent, what would be your be all end all pit? I would probably get a fully loaded Jambo offset. Oh, yes. so, right, you okay. told places. <laughs> if you're you're going different, it's like a whole new game. Like if if I was to say money's not an option, I would also say that yes, hundred percent. I just that, think it's that, badass that you tow your barbecue around. Like you got to attach that shit, and drive it around. If money's not an option, you have the truck to be able to pull it around. And right. you don't truck, you have the look. You got the look. Right? Sure. You're pulling it. you got this oh, nice. Joe, Joe has uh, he, he has, has a too. Too. like you got yeah. people checking. Kent Kent has a big old truck. I have a big old truck. We could we could we could tow some stuff. I, yeah, I, 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 have, I have a really small a, car. I actually put a five hundred pound plus offset into my 7x12 barbecue trailer tonight to use for this weekend. It's home built. It's built like a Lang, actually. Okay. Um, but it, it's going to be with a comp this weekend. First time I've had it in a trailer. My trailer, I can actually say, is now full. That's awesome. Are you I going have, live this weekend? Um, I'm going to, well, I will be going live Saturday night because I have a couple items, CJ, that you know about that I'm picking up tomorrow night. Fair enough. And so we're going to do a live on them Saturday night. Cool. But that's all I want to say at this time. That's all you got to say. Um, we got General Diamond in the house, uh, GD, the one that helped us with our graphics, uh, Yep. He does live streaming too, and he, he just jumped on the StreamYard uh, bandwagon tonight too. He got to work, so he was on our chat last night too. All right, Ken, we, we've kind of – Jabin, you've been really good about not giving yes and no answers because I still have half a page worth of questions, and I know Kent got a bunch of questions. So, Kent, keep going, buddy. I got, I got six questions left, just so you know, CJ. All right. Um, I never trust I have I have all night, and I still have a few more, a few more of these. So, Jabin, be careful. Don't interrupt, Kent. Sorry, 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 Don't interrupt, Kent. My apologies. First ever, CJ. Pat, uh, guess pen flip. 
You got a pin flip, Jamin. Uh, that, that just happened. You have been put on notice, sir. <laughs> you do not interrupt. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Javen, we're setting all sorts of records tonight with you, brother. That's right. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> all right, Javen, uh, never trust the skinny chef Shane wants to know. Um, what advice would you give an up-and-coming YouTuber? The things to do, things not to do. Did we ask this question already? Yeah, we kind of we kind of did. I mean, like I always I always come back to like do what you love. You know, don't let people, don't let your, your, as much as it's, it's, it's great to, to take su suggestions from your community, don't let that dictate what you do. Because when you start doing that, um, that's when you start to burn out. You know, right. you, you take on, like if, if, it's, if a guest says like, we want more uh, chicken wing recipes and you're like, yeah, I love chicken wings and I haven't done a lot jump on it because then you're at that point you're you're collaborating essentially with with one of your fans or one of your community members right. while doing something that you love and doing something that you feel like you, you need to add more of already um i have people i have people all the time saying you need to need, you need to do more fish recipes i can't eat fish <laughs> <laughs> And so it's really hard for me to, to do fish recipes because I can't do a taste test. I can't like, I don't, I don't know any good recipes. I'm like, I'm asking friends, like, you know, give me your fish recipes. Like we're on the West coast. Uh, and like in the fall, I can like catch fish. I can fillet fish, but I can't consume it. And so like one, one, one video coming up, actually, uh, I'll spoil the secret. Um, it's going to start my backyard. which All the videos do like, do the intro. Uh, and then it's it's going to be like, hey, uh, hey, welcome back to Post Barbecue. I'm Jaden Postal. Um, today on the grill, we're, we're going out to catch uh, some wild Pacific salmon. Uh, it's going to be great. Let's get doing this. Then it's going to be out on the boat. We're going to catch the salmon, and then we're going to cook it based off of the guy's recipe. And we're going to cook it. I don't know how yet, but it's going to sort of like tap into some of the, the community members. Um requests as well as some seo uh, research as well as just sort of like having some fun uh, and it's more for me it's like let's let's get on the boat and have some fun because i love fishing um, but when you start to do things that aren't your normal that's when it starts to become kind of like a job and you don't want it necessarily to become a job because that's when you start to burn out and slow down and you look at lots of channels uh, who have you know, they, they come up for, you know, six months, they put out 20 videos and then they stop for a year. And it's because they got burnt out uh, from making content. And, you know, like, to be honest, I haven't put out content in about three months, uh, but that's not because I'm, I'm burnt out. It's because it's I can't do it. I'm just like, life is, is crazy right now. And so I've had to sort of put a pause on that, but I know, I know like next month there's going to be new videos coming out and working already with, you know, planning some of those new videos with some companies and it's, they're coming. So when you start, yeah, I would say just, just keep going, like do, do what you love, do, do content for you and they'll, it'll be sustainable and you'll just kind of keep that fire alive and you'll get your bro. It's a little bit long winded. Yeah, basically, be yourself, do your own thing I, is kind of the way I look at it. You know, yeah. you can't you can't copy everybody, or it's just going to be stagnant. Yeah, you know that's why yeah. I didn't shrink to six one, gain fifty pounds, and wear a fedora. I, you know, it'd be like you looking at the same picture. Yeah. So, so skinny chef, like, like do you? Do you? Mm -hmm. I'll do me. You do you. Kent will do you. CJ will do you. Uh, if I try to do CJ, it's not going to work out. Um, David, watch, watch how you're saying that. You're going to get the channel excited again. Oh, yeah, boy. I don't want Kent doing me either. 
All right. Just watch. Hey, 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 do you want to introduce uh, Royalty? Oh, did I miss somebody? Yeah, Mr. Chicken Fried's in the house. Oh, hey, Sir William fried. Purvis in the house. Chicken Fried Barbecue. Welcome, sir. How you doing, man? Good dude right there. Yeah. Good yes. guy right there. You know, if 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 he lived in California, we could call him CJ, but he lives in Texas, so it's Sir William. <laughs> if he lived in Canada, we could call him brother. Right? I, love uh, I wouldn't push it that far, but okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You ready you ready for the next hard hitting question? I'm ready for it. Uh, Big Rome wants to know what are your favorite seasonings and rubs to use on beef, chicken, and pork? Cool. Beef, chicken, and pork. So I use the same rub for chicken and pork. Uh, my all-time favorite is my own. Uh, it's one that people have been asking me for uh, to put a recipe on, like a, like a YouTube video on for probably a few years now because I started, I started mentioning it saying, like, you know, we're going to put um, our, post, our postal barbecue rub, our homemade rub uh, on this chicken or this pork or whatever, right? And ever since then, people have been like, give us this rub. What's the recipe? Like, where can we buy it? And I just keep holding it out. Yeah, but it is, it's amazing. Like, every, what, if you were local and you were to buy it, because yeah, I do, when I make a batch, I sell enough to pay for the production of what I need. Five-star review on, on Facebook every single time. It's so good. But... So that's that's what I would say is my favorite. Um, I actually don't use a lot of other rubs um, because they're just not as good. And for beef, however, oh, I would say my favorite beef rub is uh, comes from the recipe would be on what's it called? Amazingribs.com. It's their beef. I don't know what's called. Uh, but you, you have to season, like you have to season your, your rub or your meat first with salt. And, you know, they say a half or a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt per pound. Uh, I, for me, I'm a little bit more than that. I'm like a, a third of a, a pound or a third of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Um, but that rub is, is great. It's, it's, uh, it's not over, it's not, yeah, it's not sweet at all, really, because there's only a bit of sugar in it, but it's really it's peppery and savory and delicious. Um, my rub uh, that I use on chicken and, and pork is more sweet. It's like it goes on ribs, but it also goes on chicken. And it's it's like uh, a, a couple couple cups. Well, I'm not going to go into it, but it's sweet with uh, a lot of savory and salt and really great stuff going on. Outside of that, oh. I honestly couldn't tell you outside of outside of that for chicken and ribs uh, because like all the, all the rubs that I've had sent to me over the years just don't compare. So yeah, that's, I, it's not really a good answer, but the beef, the beef rub, I, I really enjoy the, the amazing ribs.com beef, beef rub. Um, mine for for in-house pork and chicken um cj and ken i should send you guys some i think you should i should <laughs> you're like yes i'll take products any day yeah, uh, no hey i my my palate isn't is just is discerning as other people's are or whatever but you know it's like art i don't know what i like but i know what i like you know so yeah and um, i guess the thing is, like with barbecue rubs it's it's so personal like I know the Amazing Ribs uh, beef recipe for rub is the greatest, but that's what I like, right? right? And you have your own rubs that you like based off of your palate. And it's yeah. not, it's, it's, it's better than the other. It's just, that's what you like. And, you know, and your, your taste, your taste, your taste could change one day to the next. Like it's, exactly. you know, like I want to like, I like sweet, uh, sweet Smoky Joe's uh, honey chipotle rub. I think it's really yeah. tasty, but I also like like Victory Lane's uh, jalapeno garlic uh, all-purpose seasoning. 
I think yeah. is the best thing since sliced bread. Like I love that stuff. I was putting it yeah. on my eggs. I was putting it on my French fries. I love all that stuff. But so that's you know that's what I, people I just, say about my rub as well. They're like, we put it on our vegetables. We put it on our bread. We put it on all you these things. Made, listen, you know who makes the best rub out there? Seasoning is the guy at the bottom of the screen right there. Kent has his own rub, his his own sweet heat rub. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that stuff will knock your socks off right there. Oh, Kent, I'd love to try your, your rubs. <laughs> and I would, it's Jamin, I would love ball. to rub. I mean, send you my rub. <laughs> you guys are talking about these rubs. We could we could provide rubs for each other. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we're back to the community thing. It's it's just a big rub community is what you're saying. It's a big community rub. That's all it is. All right, let's get let's let's get back to the straight and narrow here. We got uh, uh Bill it. said uh, the interface is six. I appreciate that, Bill. We had to we had to adapt. Uh, Ryan from Off the Walls Barbecues in the house. Uh, yeah. Uh, so thank you guys for being here. Um, our uh, brothers in Canada have been dropping. Uh, oh, by the way, so Canada's winning in super shots. So all you guys that are Americans, don't let these Canadians win. These BDI BDI Canadians, they're they're winning on super shots right now, all because of Michael Rizzi, but they're winning. All right, Dutch. You got a couple of questions. What was that, CJ? I didn't you hear you. Oh yeah, I got I got plenty more. All right, Jamin. Uh, Dan's outdoor cooking. Last week's guest wants to know when dropping a video. Do you think uh, the time of the day or the day of the week makes a huge difference on? On what you see for results? Um, both. Yeah, both are definitely important. Um, I drop mine on Wednesdays around noon. Uh, it's not the best day, but it's an okay time. Um, for me, it's a part of my – I can fit it into my schedule. Like when I, when, I'm, when I have a video coming out, I make room for it. I'll, uh, I won't just um, – post like hit publish usually the night before it, it uploads and then um I'll, I'll have it all set up and ready to go but then i'll upload it or i'll sorry i'll hit publish the next day uh, on a wednesday around the noon and my philosophy with that is it's not the best time and it's not the best day but in terms of my schedule it's the best of both worlds and so, so the time, 12 o'clock Pacific time, that hits um, people in the East Coast when they're, they're nearing the end of the workday, when they're getting back onto social media and sort of like skipping out on work a little bit, right? And then hitting the evening crowd and bump, like getting views that way. On the West Coast, it's like, yes, yeah, lunchtime as well as, you know, then trickling through the day. Uh, there's more population in the East Coast than the West Coast, so that that thought works. Um, in terms of the day, Tuesdays and Thursdays are better than Wednesday um, because, you know, Monday people are sort of like they're tired and they're kind of getting back into work mode. Tuesdays they're they're getting a little bit tired, so they're getting back on social media uh, during the workday. Wednesday they're like talking with their friends about hump day and like, what are we going to do midweek to sort of get us through to Friday, Thursday, they're back to Tuesday mode, Friday, they're already thinking about party. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are the better days. That's why we always dropped videos on Thursdays with adrenaline. Um, uh, partly and partly because I was doing Wednesdays because of my schedule and Time of the day, um, you look at email marketing and you always get an email uh, from newsletters when you wake up. It's like, you know, 6 a.m. You get that email from whatever company that you're on their newsletter list because they're, they're hoping to get you when you're reading breakfast, uh, breakfast mail. Like you're eating breakfast, you're checking your the newspaper, you're checking your emails. It's, it's flooded with, uh, with content. And so 
you know, moving outside of that, what's the next best thing? It's that when people are starting to get bored at work, right? So it's just pre-lunch. It's just post leaving and you're getting them into the, and they're, they get hooked because it's like something to do finally, right? <laughs> hey, Jamie, uh, you know, I, want, I want to interrupt you right there because I usually put my videos out on Wednesdays and Sundays, right? 6 a.m. Yeah. That was my every at 6 a.m. Recently, I happened to edit one and I, I liked it. I wanted to get it out sooner. I, I didn't want to wait till Wednesday. So I put it out on Tuesday at noon and it got three or four times the amount of traffic than my normal yeah. Wednesday drop did. Yeah, so exactly. I, I'm, I'm thinking of changing my schedule to Tuesday, Tuesday drops around noon, around one. And yeah. it, I, it, it has worked out pretty well. Yeah, ideally you want to, if you're doing one video a week, you choose between Tuesday and Thursday. If you're doing two videos a week, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, that's that's my preference uh, anyways. Like there's, it's up for debate. It doesn't really matter. It's It really comes down to um, numbers and workflow. Um, right. Well, I have the Thursday hot seat. That's why I do. Yeah. Sun yeah. Sun. So you have, if you did, if you did Tuesday, Thursday, and weekends are never good, uh, or I shouldn't say they're never good, but they're not as good because people are just no. Yeah, I would probably Sunday worked out pretty well for me. Yeah, I would probably do Saturday morning if it was a weekend, just because people <laughs> tend to linger there, right? Right, right. Uh, yeah. Show show Ryan's uh, uh, question right there. I think I think it's pretty funny, and and apropos of can't tell me I work all the time. You see it, grill top experience. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. He said he says I want to know how much employers have paid their people to watch my videos. Well, well on a personal note, Ryan, um, I do not watch any YouTube videos at work unless I'm on at, on lunch break or the boss is gone. So. I would say five hours a week. <laughs> yeah. I, I for watch, me, I watch, for, uh, I, watch, I, watch, I watch videos at work and when the boss is there because I'm the boss. Well, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> so I just, I just like, if, I, if I'm just not feeling creative or um, I'm just trying to kill some time or maybe I don't want to go home or I feel like I shouldn't go home or, yeah, I just go on YouTube. Yeah, I uh, I have uh, multiple screens for my work, and one of them usually always has a YouTube up, whether I'm listening to it or watching it or whatever. It just to me, it's I put an earphone in, and it's just background noise for me. And you know, I try to support people. You know, I get the ideas. Uh, I work. Kid, kid is like big on work. I make a lot of money to do nothing or work. <laughs> Kent, I love you, boo. That may be the super shots talking. I don't know. <laughs> Are you uh, you uh, still got questions over there, stud? Oh yeah, I got I got plenty to go. I heard it. So hey, uh, but just oh, it went away now. It told me a little bit ago my phone was overheating. I thought I had an iPhone in California for a while. Yeah, that shit happens, man. Um. Never trust a skinny chef. Shane wants to know what is the oddest meat you've cooked. Now his examples were deer, moose, or bear, but I'm thinking those are pretty common in Canada. So um, I've never cooked either uh, bear, moose, or can't remember what the other one was. Deer, deer, deer. bear. Bear, bear, moose, or deer, deer or moose? Okay, deer like literally use crosswalks. Here. Um, they they're polite, so we don't re usually kill them. Nice, but they taste delicious. Uh, uh, like honestly, I, I say they use crosswalks. They actually do. Um, yeah. it's kind of our, our thing here. Um, bear, I have never cooked, but tastes amazing. It's like a, um, it's like. Really flavorful ham, like a little more salty ham. Yeah. Um, cougar, cougar, 
I've had cougar. You've had cougar? Cougar, yeah. Not I, like not like MILF at the bar, cougar. No, like actual cougar. cougar. Cougar from the woods. Because uh, that's like where, where uh, the island is like cougar capital of Canada. Wow. And so we have a lot of cougars around here. So it's just, or mountain lion, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah. And so it's it's prevalent around here. So people, hunters will cook it and then, or will we'll hunt them and make sausages out of them, whatever. <laughs> um, one thing that I've been really, really interested in trying, and I don't know if it's just our area that has them or uh, if there's other areas, it's um, beef. Oh, what is it? It's in, it was on sale in the newspaper today. Beef. Ah, frick, what is it? It's like in the packages, it's like long, straight beef things. Tenderloin? No. It, they're, they're literally like like this big. Oxtails? It, it comes in like probably a pack of a six or seven. And I'll find it. I'll find it for you. But I have I, I see them every single day I'm at the grocery store. I have no idea what to do with it, but I'm so intrigued to try it. I've just never done it. Was it beef back not beef back ribs or anything? No, no, it's it's not normal. It's not normal at, at all. It might be like you know how like like on the West Coast we have tri tip. Like I can go to the to the butcher any day that we can get tri tip. Right. Of course right. East Coast it's like they it's non-existent. Um, it, I feel like it's one of those things where it's, it's so niche that it's, it's a West Coast thing or maybe West Coast Canada thing. Jim, Suburban Barbecue said hot dogs? Hot dogs. <laughs> I mean, that's a smokehouse. That's what I said, too, is oxtail. But is it backstrap or? No, it's like. Beef tongue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it while we talk here, because I want to say it's, they they tie them like beef fingers, like the ribs, the meat from the ribs. No, they're they're like I would say they're probably like um, eight to ten inches long. Thank they're, you. It's almost like it's like it's a bone broth, like beef marrow or what? No, uh, it's not. Let's move on. This is hurting my head. <laughs> I'll, I'll find it and I'll post it to you guys. Okay. All right, we'll come back to it. I think I think you're talking about beef finger ribs. The, it's the, not the back ribs. They're also no, called not. finger ribs. It's not finger ribs. No. It's like it's something I've never seen before. Up, like only until I started noticing him, and it's like I, I want to say it's it's it literally is for for like soup stock or something. Um, but I have no idea what what you would use it for on the grill. But I, there's got to be something that you can do with it. Like you know how like you see at times uh, chicken feet in the grocery store. Do you, do you see that? Mm. I've, I've, yeah, oh, Walmart yeah, carries them. Market. I've also seen them labeled chicken paws. Chicken paws, Whenever okay. Chickens had a paw, but whatever. What What do you do with those? I know what you do with them, but it's sort of the same yeah. idea. Like you, something... you know what I do with them up here in the Midwest? I go out to the river, and I'll put them in a bucket out in the sun for a week, and I use them for catfish bait. Okay, yeah. I hate. I ain't eating something that's walked around and something that's looked like the gum I dropped three weeks ago. I'll will find these for you guys and I'll I'll post it to uh, your channels, just so you know what I'm talking about. Because if you can give me some tips on on what to do with them, like I would love it. Because they're cheap, they're prevalent, and they could be the most amazing thing ever. All right. Okay, yeah. let's do the next question, dude. Let's, let's speed them up a little bit. All right. Uh, Papa Texas wants to know, Jamin, uh, do you try comment back on uh, to everyone that posts on your videos? And do you watch their videos? Um, in terms of comments, I would say that up until probably about a month ago when I started losing track on time, um, yes, 100%. 
uh, response rate. Um, even if they're like trolls um, responding some ridiculous way, uh, I'll still respond because I, I believe that a troll is only trolling because they have issues. And if I can like change a comment in a way that changes their opinion or changes their, their mood for the day, then great. Um, the amount of trolls, especially when like um, uh, I can uh, Meathead put out uh, videos about the Sloan Seer, and I had already a Sloan Seer review out like a year before, which you know I still stand behind it, uh, even though I'm not doing work for them anymore. I still like believe in the product. Um, like I I get I got so many comments. Uh, from people just trolling saying like you're watching his videos and then coming to mind saying like these are this is a crap waste of money and by the end of it they're like oh i should actually give it a try right <laughs> and so i just believe that you know if they're taking the, the, the time to comment on on a video of mine i need to take the time to comment on their comment because they're just as much th their value is just as much um just yeah, they're, they're just as valued as I'm valued. And so if they're valuing my time, I should value their time. In terms of watching their content, um, unless they specifically say like, hey, uh, I just started a new channel, um, then I, I don't go digging. But if they say, hey, like uh, I just put out a rig video and a um, new channel, you should come check it out if you have time. Like, yeah, 100%, I'll, I'll go and, and take a look. All right. Um, CJ, I got three more. We got time? Yeah, good. All right. Um, Leprechaun TV, one of our mods, wants to know, uh, your thoughts on a Blackstone, and have you ever seen someone cook brisket and ribs on a Blackstone? Um, I've never seen anyone cook brisket and ribs on a Blackstone. Um I've never cooked on a Blackstone. They reached out to me um, three, four years ago and wanted to send me one. And they sent me a weird contract. And I'm like, I'm not jiving with this. So you can send me a con you can send me one to try out and use some videos uh, and not sign the contract, or we can just not do it. And so we never did it. I would yeah, like to try one. Yeah, I'd like to make some Philly cheesesteaks on it and um, some. I tell you food. what, um, I can I can tell you firsthand you can actually make a pizza on the Blackstone. Oh, I bet you can. Yeah, like I I would imagine you need some sort of covering on it. Like I actually bin. used a, a foil hotel pan. Okay. Yeah. But uh, and then take a torch. And never trust the skinny chef Shane. He's also made a pizza on the Blackstone. So, and our, our boy uh, uh, Jay from Leprechaun TV did a brisket on his Blackstone, and and ribs, and ribs, and pork ribs. I, I get I get the ribs. I I can see how you could do ribs, but but a brisket. I'm like, that's some skill. He's got it was, it was definitely one of the ages for like sure. Maybe maybe he deserves a slow clap or something. Yeah. So, he he actually put the uh, the brisket on an elevated rack on the Blackstone, had a smoker box in there, and then took like a WSM lid to yeah. cover. Oh no way! So, so kind of like almost convecting a little bit. It was it was very uh, uh, very creative. Let's put it that yeah. way. Creative is the right word. So, hey, cool. That's how we. That's how we push push everything, right? That's how we push our industry, and you know, not think outside the box. You look at the the craft beer world, and it's like, you know, you went from pilsners and darks uh, and lagers to like sours and all these really interesting beers um, that only came about because people were willing to try things. You know, maybe that's the best way to cook brisket. We don't know until someone tries it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Papa Texas wants to know, would uh, you be willing to do a collaboration with him? 
Um, hundred percent. Yes. I love, um, I haven't done many collaborations. Um, but you know, in terms of, in terms of collaborations, you can do them locally. You can do them digitally, or you can just do like recipes where we're like, we're going to make the same rest or the same type of content, um, just in our own, in our own ways. And that's a really easy way to do it. Um, but you know, like collaboration is, is how communities grown. And, you know, I always, I always rave about the barbecue industry and barbecue world in that we are a collaborative bunch of people. And that's what sets us apart is that we're, we're not, it's not like, uh, we're not willing, we're not, we don't feel like we're sharing our secrets and then having them ripped away from us. We're just sharing our secrets and having it add to the whole community. And so collaboration really is a way to build stronger community and to really grow barbecue culture across the world. So yeah, no, I would totally be interested. If anyone messaged to collaborate, um, I would seriously like be up, up for it. Unless, unless again, it was a time of year where time didn't allow for it. Yeah. Right. No, I, I agree. I think, I think collabs are a good thing. First of all, um, uh, CJ, you were in it, on it too, I believe, the uh, grilled cheese collab last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Seeing all the different takes on it. Yeah. That was and huge. then uh, I think it was John, 1984 barbecue, actually grilled his cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He made it on a Weber kettle. No yeah. pan, not a cast iron pan on a, on a Weber kettle. He was he did grilled cheese, and it was it was cool to see his take on it. I mean, it was yeah. something totally different than everybody else did, and people are like, "Hey, that's cool." Yeah, so I probably would do like a, like a grilled mac and cheese, you know, like make the macaroni and put cheese in, and then grill it with some cheese, but then with some pork shoulder or some chopped up pork loin that was smoked, right? There you and go. We did. We did. A, we did a mac and cheese collaboration, and I put brisket in mine. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So that brewery I was telling you about um, that I started with um, with their pale ale, they do or they did a mac and cheese, a grilled mac and cheese with you know traditional or pulled pork, uh, or sorry, Korean pulled pork, uh, oh, or wow. something else, pork belly, I think it was, and it was amazing, like. Oh, mac and cheese or uh, grilled cheese? Uh, I want one right now. <laughs> Someone said, oh, crap, I'm getting hungry. I'm like, I can use a grilled cheese right now. I know. All right, Ken, go ahead, bud. All right, last one. Uh, Smokehouse Barbecue uh, wants to know, he says, uh, what does cougar taste like? Oh. Don't say chicken. <laughs> I was actually going to say more like it was a while ago, but I want to I want to say, and I could be getting things mixed up. Uh, I want to say more like pork, like a like a type of. Um, I mean, obviously, it, it was for me. It was uh, cougar sausage, and so it was more fatty. Um, and so, I mean, as soon as you think about fatty meats, you think about pork, right? And so it had a little bit of that flavor, had a little bit of like that like gamey flavor of deer, um, but it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. That's what I can remember anyways. Fair enough. All right. Uh, I am out of questions for now. So CJ, um, why don't you get to work yes sir all right I have to rehydrate you have to rehydrate i get it all right let's talk about kind of youtube fun type stuff that we always ask three channels you watch on youtube one big one small or one you think to be bigger cool okay um 
one I watch a lot um, is okay. One one that's smaller that I think could be bigger is <laughs> uh, Grill Top Experience. Um, you see what this punk's putting on the. Yeah, so so Ryan from Grill Top Experience, like he's got incredible production value and audio, and um, he's great on camera. It's just like a matter of time before goes like just takes off. Um, one channel that I really enjoy uh, and and watch a lot of is um, one I mentioned with the Yoder. All things barbecue. All things barbecue. And again, it's not necessarily the content, it's the production value. Right. And so again, because because that's what I do on my day to day, that's what I gravitate to. It's it's a lot of the like production value. And I'm actually seeing how they're they're trying to raise the bar in their production value. And it, and end of the day, like they're they're not YouTube videos. They're like they're using, I think, like a Sony F, uh, FS seven hundred camera with uh, like a full body stabilizer. Right. And they're spending. It's it's not about the the video. It's about the sales that come from the video online. Right. right. That's right. that's my my take on it. But you know, like the production of it is amazing. Um, uh, obviously, I, I watch uh, Justin because he's a buddy of mine. Um, T. Roy. Uh, I watch a lot of uh, Michael from. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Oh, total drink. Some ABC videos right now. You guys. Oh, uh, everyday barbecue. Everyday yes, barbecue. everyday barbecue. Uh, watch a lot of him. Um, one one that I really enjoy, um, just for because of uh, Pam is um, uh, again. What is it from Florida? Sal from Google Foods. Which one? Google Google Foods. Subi everything. Oh, I watch I watch a lot of his too. Um, no. Um, Fire in the hole. It's oh, Sal, so, uh, Rude Boy Cooks, Rude Boy Cooks. Yeah, you uh, know why I'm having such a hard time on the spot with these, but yeah, I watched a lot of him and like my kids. My kids asked to watch him as well, so um, they. I have a video of my youngest son at like three years old saying "Fire in the hole," and <laughs> you know, like we would at bedtime, we would he would ask specifically to watch his videos, and so we watched a lot of his videos, and you know, just like. Just fell in love with his personality, and uh, you know, end of the day, I, I watch every everyone. And if if I'm on YouTube, I just go to what's what's new and and scroll and play and scroll and play and scroll and play. And mm -hmm. so the more like CJ, you put a, post a lot of videos up, or you put a lot of videos up, so I watch a lot of yours. Um, you know, Google puts a lot of videos up, so I watch a lot of hands. Um, every Friday, uh, Sal puts a lot of videos out. So I watch his on Friday if I'm around on Fridays. Do you watch uh, Steve from Not Another Cookie Show? He's another ABC. Oh, yeah. No, I watch, I watch a lot of his. He's got great production value, too. production value, yeah, is just outstanding. Yeah, he's one of the guys that came to mind when uh, talking about like, the algorithms. I don't know if he does a lot of algorithms, but he does a lot of social pushing. Yeah, his social media game is very strong. Which helps with algorithm. Yeah. It, well, you saw it last was it last month or whatever. He blew up like fifty thousand subscribers yeah. in a month. Like it was ridiculous. And yeah, I got I got my theories, right? Uh -huh. I got I got my theories on, on why that happened, like in, in the tra trajectory of, of his YouTube career. Uh, sort of watching watching him over the past year mm -hmm. and the the types of content he's put out. And the people he's he's collaborated with, and all sort of like stemming to a moment where it just kind of went, just blew up. Yeah, and that that's what we're looking for, right? Those, yeah, those every, moments. Moments. every day I hope I wake up to 
you know, 10,000 subscribers like overnight. You know, I want that, that experience that Steve had. I think all of us are working towards that. Hello? Yep, you there? You okay. Of- okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dutch. Hey, uh, just for the record, there's one guy who beat him on Battle of the Kitchens. Yes, that is true. Did you ever did you watch the Battle of the Kitchens with uh, uh, Smoking and Grilling AB's channel? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, you know that our boy Kent was the grand champion. What? No, I didn't. What? There's, there's the trophy. No. <laughs> oh man! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I watched about like seven episodes. I would say he beat yeah. he beat Steve from Not Another Kicking Show. <laughs> So. Yeah, I mean, Steve's got some great content. Like, um, I love I love his production value. I love the recipes that he's putting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that that we've been able to we have, we have some similar history in terms of like you know types of content that we're, we 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 put out over the years. Right. Uh, and I would honestly, if I'm in New York, he's first on my list of people to call. Definitely. Like, Agreed. See, I'm in town. Let's let's grab some food. Take me to your places. We got to do the. Oh, not even that. I'm like Steve. I'm in town. And I don't have a place to stay. I need to. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, right. if you're watching. If you watch the replay of this, know that next time I'm in New York, I'm staying at your place. Okay. I'm, yeah, through, I'm, through I'm, I'm so taken over his couch for a week. <laughs> Dude, I just love to just be chilling. I'd love to watch him do his thing too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, would, love, I would love to do a ABC, um, an ABC creators episode where it's like all the all the people that have done videos for for Adrenaline all get together for one amazing epic cook. Where it's like you know, however many kettles we need, all laid out, and we're all cooking on individual kettles. And creating like the best food possible on every single kettle. That would be amazing. Someone needs to get Dave on that. Yeah, no, he. I think yeah. It probably comes comes back to me because I don't have a passport. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if if you look at the guys involved, I mean, uh, Russ has one. Uh, every day, Mike one. has one. Yeah. Um. Who else has one? Well, Steve, Guga, Mike. Yeah. I mean, you get that group together and have everybody do their own dish on one and, you know, come forward with it. One big, you know, in-house collab. That would be cool to watch. Oh, it'd be amazing. Yeah. Because everybody's going to be cooking something totally different. Mm -hmm. And especially with Steve, you know, I watched his eggplant farm right before we started the broadcast tonight. And my wife gives me shit because I like the goofy vegetables. I love eggplant, you know, but I won't eat green beans. (laughs) (laughs) And she, you know, I I was loving that video. So, yeah, Steve Steve is definitely, uh, Steve, he's awesome. I love that guy. Yeah, I would actually, I would actually love to collaborate with him on a outside of barbecue project. Yeah, because yeah. he's a very creative guy. He is. And I think if he was, if he was, say, on my production team, he would add a lot of value. Um, yeah. And I don't know where he's at in terms of his his videography career because I know like that's one thing that he was um, like doing and pursuing, right? Um, but in terms of, uh, like I, my company has been around for like five years now, um, in terms of what he would add to my team, if he was to, to move to Canada, to the West coast, which is the best coast, uh, and join my team, he would, he would add a lot of value uh, to it. And I would, any day of the week, I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's work on something together. He, uh, he actually was my first guest on the hot seat. Back when you have like less than a thousand subscribers or whatever. Yeah. 
So I told him when he got to a hundred thousand, we'd have him back on. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get back. By the way, here. that's going. It'll be in about two weeks. Yeah. Seriously. Two weeks. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, if you could cook with anybody in history, who would it be? Alive or dead? Four. Oh. Honestly, I don't know. I actually, the first thing that comes to my, my mind is my grandma. Hey, that's sweet. That is, that's yeah. a perfect answer. You don't have to tell. I mean, everybody wants to kill with grandma. I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I'm with you, brother. So, yeah, I mean, know, it's not what I'm about it now. Like, it's, she would have no clue on how to cook barbecue right in terms of like tradition like uh she's polish like like came from poland mm. um she knows like all the traditional ways to cook polish food and i think like even going back to steve like some of the things that that he's learned from just cooking italian food and, and things like that like um i think that there there would have be a lot of things that I could bring into my family's history, what she did. So, right, so, right. In terms of people I'd like to cook with in the barbecue community, I, I would love to cook with Franklin Barbecue um, just because he seems like a great guy. Yeah. Someone who would uh, take. Actually, yeah, I've been thinking about buying that master class he did uh, for, I don't know, Marriage Express or whatever it was. All right, next question. Not that we hope. Death is upon you, or you're going to be on death row anytime soon. But what would your last meal be? <laughs> oh, thin sliced pork loin. <laughs> it might actually be some sort of Indian curry. All right. Sounds good to me. Um, honestly, All right. people people say like your favorite food must be barbecue. I'm like, that's one of them. It's barbecue, pizza, and curry. And if I could have a feast of all like amazing Indian curries uh, with all of the side dishes, I think that would put me over the top to the point where I possibly could die. Right. Because it's so full and just like satisfied. All right. So I put uh, Joe's comment on there, a well-fingered brisket. <laughs> a well fingered brisket. There you go. All right. Two more questions, and we're going to call it a night. I'm freaking tired. Uh, who would be on your personal Mount Rushmore? Four people you love and admire you'd like to see up on a big mountain. If you maybe look at your screen, you can get at least one idea. So there's my wife. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> you guys, for sure. <laughs> um, thanks, Cam, for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, I couldn't answer that. All right. Hey, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. It yeah. caught me off guard, too. I couldn't figure it out. It doesn't matter. It's, just, it's not. It, it, what? Dutch is all hard. hard. Dutch is on my personal Mount Rushmore, 100%. Ah. Um, but if you, if you don't answer, dude, like I said, these, these aren't yes and no questions. You're, you're not getting graded on this one, so don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that it's just really hard because, like, like, immediately my mind goes to some amazing, amazingly – some amazing friends, like um, yeah. friends that have, have walked with me through good times and hard times. And, you know, I'd put them up on there. I'd also put up, you know, role models uh, and mentors. Uh, I'd also put on up like, you know, uh, speakers and people that have had the, the opportunity to just sit under and, and be influenced by. And sort of to narrow it down to four, I think it's like, yeah, that's just too hard because there's some people that have influenced my life in such a positive way that I want like 20 people on that Mount Rushmore, right? 
Right, right. Or even even today, I like I messaged like four or five good buddies, and I'm like, they would all be up on there. Oh, that's cool. For their own different reasons. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I just, yeah. I mean, people. It it takes a this that one line that says it takes a, a village to raise a child is so true in terms of of like us as adults, right? It's like it takes it takes a community to to really push us forward, and all those people have their own significance, and not one is more important than the other. They just have their their different places. And right, so, right. I I would love to have like a, a Mount Rushmore of like thirty people up there, just like all their faces that's Mount Rushmore that's like an American thing right yeah it's in South Dakota it's on the, the, uh, I know I know well, maybe, the, maybe the Canadians you know could put 20 people up there we just there. We just have the Rockies and that's just our thing we're, we're Mount Trudeau or whatever so all right um last question and then we'll say our goodbyes and, and move on uh it's getting late we're coming up on three hours right now uh, doing well, you did great. But last question: Who would you like to see on the hot seat? Hmm. I would like to see, and I yeah, maybe he's been on already. Um, but Sal from um, again, brain fart. Um, fire in the hole. Oh, Sal, the root boy cooks. Sal, root boy cooks. Yeah, we've had him on. Oh, you have, eh? I missed it. Yeah, him and Dan from Smoky Goodness were oh, on. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I did actually catch that. Um, yeah. Okay, then who else? Who else would it be? Hmm. I mean, you've had so many people on, and I know I missed a lot of them. Uh, but I have caught a number of great people. Um, have you had chicken fried barbecue on here? Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're bad uh, at thousands, Gavin. <laughs> well, I'm just really bad with, with things like this. You know, uh, I'd love to have Guga on. Okay, and uh, I I can't get a hold of the guy, but I think he'd be a great one to have on here. Yeah, he would. Yeah, uh, uh, Mike's been on already. Obviously, Steve's been on. Uh, we've had Justin and Troy. I did message Sean Canal about coming on. Oh, you, you I would love to have him on. That'd be that would be, <laughs> that'd be game changer yeah. there. Yeah, I did ask him uh, tonight during this conversation to see if he could. I'll, I'll let you know if he's interested. Very cool. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's honestly the people that you bring on are are often people that I've never really heard of, and so right. it's a chance for me to to like see what they're doing. Well, and, and the people that are watching tonight might be the same thing. Like we've never heard of Postal Barbecue. Um, right. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the, what the reason what this was to get started, what Hobo started this for was to get so people could get to know each other in the community or get to know the people they've been watching. Uh, for us, it doesn't matter if you have what two subs like Kent had when he first came on, or you know you know you have twenty thousand or nineteen thousand, whatever it is, or you know Steve when he gets hundred. You know it doesn't matter how many subscribers on if you're going to be interesting to talk to you. And we're going to get some butts in the seats. That's all that matters to us, right? So, uh, you know, it, it, I like that we're introducing people to people, right? I mean, yeah. you know, uh, anyway, so that's another thing. Kent, you know, say anything on the way out, buddy? We're, we hit, we're yeah. on the three-hour mark. Hey, mark. Jabin, I got to oh. say, great answers tonight. Um Hopefully your channel explodes as big as mine did because when I was on the hot seat, I had two subs. I've grown to 1,085 now. So yep. hopefully you go from 19,000 to 100,000. Yeah, I'm shooting for that 20,000 before end of summer. That's my... That's well, my there goal. you go. And you guys I, have goals, I right? I an answer to the hot seat. It's not necessarily barbecue related. 
Uh, but Glenn and Friends. Glenn and Friends. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, there you I go. Don't describe one, but I don't catch a lot of uh, Guy from Toronto, he does a lot of like just cooking content. And he has a, his own studio down in his basement. He uses like a red camera to film everything with. Like, oh, it's, oh, for sure. production value is like incredible. Um, and he would be intriguing to, to listen to. All right, I'll look him up. All right, so Javen, you got anything to say on the way out? Um, only that, like, I really, really appreciate you guys. Um, what you do on a on a week in week out basis, both CJ and Kent, like you guys are really spearheading uh, community within the the cooking world and the in the barbecue world on YouTube, and it's it's really inspiring to to see what you guys are doing and uh, know that know that what you're doing here on a Thursday night goes beyond just Thursday night and. You guys, like, I, I don't know if, if you're like me, you might get discouraged on like what what a Thursday might like, uh, what a Thursday night might look like, um, especially after this this interview. But, <laughs> but like, know that know that what you're doing is like goes further than you can imagine. And uh, for me personally, like, I I really respect you guys and look up to you guys as uh, influencers within this community. And, um, I, I, yeah, I just appreciate you guys so much. So right on, man. And and we, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, you've done a great job tonight. You kept everybody interested for three whole hours. Granted, you do have to compete with Kent with the eye candy of the the show right here. That's true. And uh, Canadians, Canadians won, right? End of the night we won. Yes. The Canadians won on the super shots tonight. So, all, you, all you Americans, I'm a little disappointed in you. You let you let them beady eyed Canadians beat us in the super shots. So anyway, but I appreciate all the super shots in there, guys. It doesn't go unnoticed. We we appreciate you every week. It keeps us all in booze and, and it keeps the show running. Now I'm actually have to pay for my stream since Google's gone. So it's gonna help keep this show actually running. So the super shots really do help. So thank you guys. Really, really do appreciate it. Kent, great job as always, man. I love you, brother. I appreciate you being here. You're love the man. You too, man. All right. Jabin, you were awesome tonight. Uh, guys, everybody else, uh, we we can't really do the Google Hangout thing like we used to do the post show. Uh, we could fit six people into the screen and hold ten people all together. Uh, together. So if you want to IM me or send me a message on uh, Facebook, I'll put the link in there so you guys can join in, but it's just not going to be the same. I don't want to put the link in the chat anymore because I think it's just going to cause a big, uh, big uh, traffic jam for lack of a better way of putting it. Yeah. So if you guys want to join in the after show hangout, just message me on Facebook and I'll send you the link. All right, guys. Uh, so going forward uh, this month or this Sunday, we are doing a special hot seat. Sunday morning with Adam Garrett uh, from the UK. Uh, he used to be his show used to be or his channel used to be Adams Eats. Adams Eats. Yeah, Adams Eats. I think he took off. You know, he just changed it to his name. Uh, so we've decided that you know once a month or so we're going to do a UK across the pond guest on Sundays. We do it at 10 a.m. my time. Uh, was at noon Kent's time. And then uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. All right. So I hope you guys could all be there. I appreciate it. Um, next Thursday, our regular scheduled, um, our regular scheduled hot seat is Blevin from uh, West Coast Cajun Cuisine. Uh, he's a big rock star, so hopefully we can get him, you know, on the on his uh, guitar. He plays a me and electric guitar, so hopefully we can get him playing for us a little bit. Well, that's it, guys. Whew, this was a long one, Javen. Good job, buddy. Hey, it's good. All right. I'm, I'm going to stop the broadcast. Uh, again, message me if you want to jump in. I don't know how long we're going to stay on tonight since we're getting a late start. But I appreciate you all being here. We'll see you on Sunday morning, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. All right? Take care.